sports car. We're in Virginia, a beautiful state which um, has a lot of uh, tourism, but here this weekend, it's not about lazing around and taking things easy, it's about pedal to the metal racing. And whether it's at the first class karting facilities here or on the 3.27 miles of brand new tarmac that forms Virginia International Raceway, you're guaranteed to have plenty of action and excitement. The circuit was only repaved a couple of weeks ago. We're nearby Alton in Virginia. Cross over the state line to North Carolina a couple of times, depending on which way you're coming from. The back roads are nice and twisty around here. 1957, the 17 corners were carved out of the local green countryside by men with earth movers. And ultimately, really, the circuit hasn't changed in its layout since then. It's been improved, it's been made safer, and two weeks ago, as I said, it has been repaved. But the 1957 layout remains. The apices of all of the corners are where they were. The challenge that those 1950 sports cars, formula cars, and motorcyclists took are being taken now by the drivers here this afternoon. The front row of the grid then, Aston Martin and Porsche, Sebastian Landy versus Danny Paquette, 99 and 33. Row two is Scott Maxwell in the number 15, the white with green, Canadian racing stripe Shelby 350RC. He has the similar car, the black and multicolored car alongside it, that's the Compass 360. Ironically, another Canadian team with Paul Holton, young man who has been driving in TT Cup in Europe, the only US driver in the Audi TT Cup in Europe this year. Charlie Putman back in the series with Charles Espinlab, and they've done rel really well since they've returned. The 09, the second of the Aston Martins, the automatic racing car in fifth position. Cameron Castles will start the Porsche number 12 in the sixth position, and Ted Giovannis, the 46 Porsche. Then it's the ST runners, Jeremy, and it's Hondas at the head of the field. They've locked out the front row. They have, and the trick for them would be to look after their front tyres, their front wheel drive machines, the engine over the driven wheels. So uh, those front tyres really have to work hard on those Honda Civics. Right behind them, though, the Porsche, there's a Porsche Cayman. And this an Altima has a lot of horsepower, possibly the fastest car here in a straight line. Uh, and again, the, uh, the key there is to, is to look after the tyres, make sure they last. They're a little bit farther back down the field. The Minis, I tell you what, they've been praying for rain all weekend long because they know those cars are fast in the rain. Let's head down to Sheer Adam in the pit lane. Problems early on for one of our starters. For the Rebel Rock car, the number seven, that one uh, came back down the pit lane well before we even see the green flag because somebody knocked his mirror on that first pace lap. So the crew put it back into position. Unfortunately, the seven will have to take the start from the pit lane. Okay, thank you, Shea. A continental tire. First of our continental tire pit lane reports in the race, and we haven't actually got the race even started yet. I mentioned Jeremy in our countdown to green that this is only two and a half hours. A lot of people say it's not really a, a, an endurance race, but the way the sporting regulations, the driver times, and the amount of fuel that these cars carry, they all combine together to make this just as big a test of strategy as a race of four or six hours. Certainly, the, the ST cars, they can get to the, to the end of this race really long, just one pit stop, but the trick is there. The, uh, it's, uh, you don't have to have a pro-am lineup, but most of the uh, driver lineups are pro-am. So one professional driver and one lesser experienced driver. Uh, generally, the, the pro, therefore, would be quicker. But the problem is you have to do a minimum drive time to score points. That's 45 minutes at this race. So you have to make you, you, you have to stay in at least for 45 minutes. And then can you do an hour and 45 minutes well, on, on a tank of fuel? in an ST car? No, not quite. No, so not there's all there. sorts of strategies to be played out. The GS cars will expect, expect them to stop twice during this two hours, uh, two and a half hour race. The lights are out on the pace car as it is now. The M6 Coupe will pull right-handed in the pit lane in a couple of moments time. If it reappears, it will be the safety car. Let's hope it doesn't and we get a green race. The GS field has split slightly from the ST field as they come through turn 17, the hog pen, and head back towards us under the 
care now of Sebastian Landy. The ST is just closing in a little bit as the small but perfectly formed grid of GS cars gets the green flag. And we are racing. And immediately from the back of the grid, the body motion Porsche gets a great run. The mass ranks of the ST cars go through and hung out on the outside. The all black Porsche in the ST field was two wheels on the grass there and dropped a lot of positions early on, but the first part of what the pullman was hoping for has happened. He's held on to the first position, but Danny Burkett has had an absolute stinker and drops down to fifth position from the front row. Yeah, that is a surprise, certainly. Great start by Sebastian Landy. He's got, he knows that uh, Aston Martin V8 engine has plenty of torque, plenty of power, able to take advantage of that. And that's the same attributes that the Ford Shelby's have as well. They use that acceleration off the line to beat uh, Danny Burkett into the first corner. And now Danny's got to pass, first of all, Cameron Council. He does that coming through the snake, but already the V8 cars are gone. He's now going to catch them up. It's a balancing act between getting the tyres up to pressure and temperature and wearing them out too early. These Continental tyres, tremendously durable, but racing drivers tend to put the absolute... Uh, put tyres through the absolute test. Indeed, uh, three of our IMSA, four of our IMSA drivers have been working with Continental Tyre on their next uh, set of uh, their next line of street tyres due to be released sometime early next year. We'll keep you up to date with that. And that is the technology from track to the street. The GS cars spreading out as they come round to complete the first lap in ST. A huge must start, was very impressive indeed. And it's, at the moment, it's still the two Hondas that lead from the Porsche number 31 in third position and left Jeff Morsing in the 56 car making up positions. As through comes the leaders then. And, ah, now this is interesting, the 74, Jim McGuire, the Audi has come in along the pit lane and rather confused our timing and scoring at the minute it's time it's scored at the top of the timing and scoring monitor but it came in at the end of the first lap share adam is down there they did a bit of work in the engine compartment john they had some overheating issues with the car yesterday it wasn't that the engine was actually moving a bit more freely than they would have liked they put a couple zip ties in to try and help the hoses stay into place better but they sent the car back out and uh, everything looked to be okay for now uh, seven got a drive through at the start, although uh, Shea seemed to think that they'd knock the uh, mirror off that car. Uh, there's, so because they've started from pit lane, they have to do a drive through. Thank you, Shea, for uh, updating me on that. So the two Hondas then, the HART, the black or dark grey machines with, uh, oh, you notice a new uh, flash on the, on the bonnet, on the hood of those cars this weekend in bright red and white, proclaiming the Hart, the Honda America Racing Team, all of the team members, including the drivers, are workers up at the factory up at uh, Marysville. Yeah, in yeah. Ohio. Oh, Ohio, yeah. Not too far away from Mid-Ohio Sports Car, of course. But uh, those cars really working well here. Yeah, that number 74 car then goes a lap down already. It's uh, shown his lap ahead of what it actually is. And that car had, a, uh, they had an engine failure in, in uh, practice. They had to change that for the race. Therefore, I had to start from the back. Sound and vision synchronised perfectly across the world from VIR as we're live at trackside. And at the moment, the 93 of Chad Gilsinger has a pretty clear track ahead of him as he comes through towards the end of his second racing lap. He's got his teammate, Kevin Boehm, sitting right in behind him. Then, in third place, the number 31 is the... Porsche just dropping away a bit that little blue Porsche uh, not able for the moment to hold on to the pace of the the two Hondas ahead of it the 31 body motion racing team had a good start in the hands of Jason Reb uh, Rabbit excuse me man from uh, Monticello decent little racing area up there as well now haven't they Five minutes gone already, Jeremy, and Sebastian Landy has managed to pull out about a second at the head of the, of the field from Scott Maxwell. The two GS 
Big V8, all bad news for Jim McGuire. He's back in and parks in front of us. It's going to be one of those days, isn't it, when you've been in twice in the first two laps. The seven car does its drive through from starting in the pit lane. That's the uh, Rebel Rock Racing Porsche. Yeah, and a couple of notes in ST. Uh, Chad McCombie, uh, the uh, defending series champion, along with Stephen McAleer, they uh, started uh, way back in their class after a uh, pretty average qualifying effort. Started in the, in the uh, ninth position in the class, but they're moving up, made up a couple of positions on that first lap, did Chad McCombie, up into second place, and in the big sort of train of cars, they're battling in the uh, lower reaches of the top ten. Not good news down in front of us. The engine's been turned off on the number 74 Audi S3 and it may be a short day for Jim Maguire and Nico Rondé. Well, they've had overheating problems on both of those cars as have, as have the Minis this weekend as well. We talked about the Minis briefly during the, uh, the starting lineup rundown and uh, they had problems yesterday with the fuel, fuel filters on all three cars and they had a, a whole bunch of uh, mini guests here, mini, de mini dealership guests here last night at a big party. And then afterwards, they uh, savaged the three of the road cars from, uh, from the dealership guys uh, and, and, and took the uh, fuel pumps off those cars, put them on the race cars, and then put the fuel pumps from the race cars onto the road cars so at least they can get home tonight. As Lewis Pericarpi was telling me, he's the uh, team principal there at LRP Motorsports and run the mini JCW team. The good news is they don't have to do 100 miles an hour on those road cars. So they should be fine to get home and then they can get a fresh fuel, fuel pumps when they get back in the morning. Parts on the hoof, <laughs> like it, absolutely love it. At the head of the field, Sebastian Landy is doing a fine job. This is first time in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, first time in that Aston in race conditions and he's holding on to almost a second of Scott Maxwell, who has a little more experience, I think it's fair to say. Paul Holton is just another seven tenths further back in third position. Danny Paquette is closing them down for CJ Wilson and the 33 Cayman. The battle is starting to get interesting as well at the front of the ST field. Battle's also in the GS though with Charlie Putman and Cameron Castles going at it now as they head up towards the Oak Tree turn, the southern end of the circuit. And Cameron just getting a little sneaking under braking as the invisible glass Aston Martin, the automatic racing car, with Charlie Putman at the wheel. Charles Esplanade, his teammate, gets a good run. Coming down the first part of Madison Avenue, goes to the first brow. They're absolutely side by side as they head towards the top of the hill. And he's through into the braking area for the roller coaster. And the Aston goes up one position. So that is fifth now for Charles Putman. Now, can he hang onto it through the twistier parts of the circuit as he clips the kerb on driver's left coming down towards the final corner? Always looks like you're on the wrong line coming down there, but you've got to tough it out. Keep trusting that the car is going to turn right and take you onto the start-finish line. Meanwhile, at the head of the field, Sebastian Landy now no longer holds any kind of lead whatsoever. Has out of turn number three and heading towards the left hook. He's got barely a car and a half, maybe two cars lengths between himself and the white 350 Shelby. Paul Holton is closed in as well. The top three having been separated by eight tenths and seven tenths, now only nine tenths between all of them. That's right, because it was a third place car, Paul Holton, that set the fastest lap of the race last time around. He was about three quarters of a second quick, quicker than Sebastian Landy. And in fourth place there, Danny Burkett, not able to match that leader's pace at this stage in the race. But uh, he'll, be, uh, he'll, be, he'll be planning uh, that the uh, bigger, heavier cars ahead of him will use up their tyres a bit more voraciously than will his lighter, much lighter Porsche Cayman GT4 Club Sport. Then, as the stint runs along, he'll be able to close in again and hopefully make a challenge for the lead himself. That's car number 33, Danny Biquette. Wherever you are around the world or around the track, welcome along to VIR. It's Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge action for the Oak Tree Grand Prix at VIR. John Heinoff and Jeremy Shaw in the broadcast suite trackside as we're looking out onto the start-finish line. Through goes the Rebel Rock Porsche in front of us, having dropped quite a lot of ground. The head, oh, the 74 cars back out again as well. So the S3 Audi is back out after a couple of pit stops early on. First, second and third in ST 
absolutely together now as they go down the long back straight. Madison Avenue, the leaders come through. They've opened out just a tiny bit. They complete lap five. And it's back out to eight tenths and nine tenths at the head of the field. As Sebastian Landy has weathered the immediate storm and counted with the fastest lap of the race, 57.9. Well done to that young man. He will not be intimidated by Scott Maxwell and Paul Holton, who have lots more experience than he in this type of racing and in these type of cars. Meanwhile, in ST, it's the two Hondas. Chad Gilsinger and Kevin Baum. Now, they don't want to be racing each other too hard at this uh, point in time, Jeremy, because their front tyres is what will limit them and their performance through the race. Great battle further down the field from 11th position onwards. Nick Galanti uh, has one, two, three, or heads a three Porsche Cayman line. And then in behind then is that's James Clear in the BMW, the 84 car. So that's 11th uh, in class. Down to James Clear, 14th in class, absolutely together. As Gallant just holding on to that position. Behind him, the 83 Porsche. That's the... Red Line Racing Oils sponsored machine as they go through three. Oh, and Nick goes a tad wide. And Dari Balos goes the next level. The European car had a little look there, but in doing so, then he slows himself down. And Phil Bloom, who's behind him in the RS1, the Rensport 1 car, the 18 that he shares with Andy Lally, he has a little go for a moment. And then Clear, and behind Clear, it's the 37 Mini with uh, Austin Mack behind the wheel that's closing up. So that's 11th now down to 18th position uh, in class. Uh, 11th down to 15th position in class. Pardon me. Yeah, the 18-year-old there, Austin Mack from Warren Roll Island, making his debut in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge this weekend in that Mini. He seems to be trailing some fluid there. As we see, here's a move for the lead now, a little bit wide slips Sebastian Landy, and Scott Maxwell takes full advantage by moving through into the lead at turn one. Thunder and lightning in the air around VIR and the action is hot on the track as well. Electric here as the lead has changed and Scott Maxwell takes advantage, full advantage of Sebastian Landy. Jim Roller predicted electrical storms having looked at those thunderheads earlier on. He was absolutely spot on. And the windscreen wipers are on for Scott Maxwell. Southern end of the circuit is where the Weather seems to be coming from, and Scott Maxwell has flipped the wipers on early. The Ford team were getting the tyres out. Oh, yes, it's really going up the hill towards turn uh, number 14. Uh, turn number 12, rather, the Oak Tree turn. Enough to have the wipers on. I wondered if Scott had just clipped them as he was making the pass, but no. It is raining enough there. And it's not just dribbling, drizzling down there, it's now raining. It won't be long before that wets the track if it doesn't clear up. Thunder cracking, cracking off in the distance. And this is an electrical storm for which this area is famed. It's been very hot and humid over the last few days. Just uh, in the late 90s Fahrenheit mid 30 degrees Celsius for the last couple of days. It was overcast last night, but the weather didn't break. Now, through the front straight, there's no rain at all on the windscreen of the leading car. And indeed, Scott Maxwell turns the wipers off. Down towards turn one though, just into the braking area now, and the wipers are back on. Down to the horseshoe, Scott Maxwell turns in. Oh, big slide from Maxwell, loses the back end of the car. Paul Holton is now in second place. Third is Landy. And the lightning in the area means that the TV cameramen will be standing down. We'll rely on what we can see out of the window and from the fixed cameras around the circuit proper rain that is now changing the colour of the pit lane 
which is a lighter colour of tarmac than the newly paved circuit. Now, this is going to be interesting, Jeremy. This track is barely two weeks late, and this is the first time it will have had water on it. How is it going to react, and how will the teams react? Will they tough it out for now? It's great news for the 75 car, which is the uh, four-wheel, the all-wheel drive, the Quattro. The 74 car's dropped a bit of of uh, real estate. I'm expected to get greasy though the top well, surface. Indeed so, and like I said, the mini guys have been they've been praying for rain. They're a little bit farther down the order at the moment. The best of them in the 17th position overall. So running out of top 10, that's Derek Jones in number 73 mini. We'll see what he can produce in these whole conditions. But tell you what, the guys catching my eye uh, is Michael Johnson in car number uh, 54. He's up into the sixth place. He's just passed last year's champion Chad McCumbie. He's also passed Sarah Catania. And just doing an amazing job in the number 54, JDC Miller Motorsports BMW 228R. Brand new car this season. Of course, Michael drives with hand controls. Uh, they've had all sorts of problems getting their little electronic systems on that car. But uh, a magnificent drive by Michael Johnson. And problems for the leader, I think, as Paul Holton is now being scored as the leader. And we've lost the 15 car. He has gone off at the far end of the circuit. And lost the lead, big spin at Oak Tree for Scott Maxwell, ended up facing in the wrong direction. And that allowed Paul Hunt and Sebastian Landy and Danny Burkett to go through. We're still waiting for Maxwell, he's dropped nine seconds on the field, 19 seconds on the field. Yeah. Uh, as he spun out the lead and when it, Scott Maxwell is finding it hard to stay on the track, that tells you how difficult the conditions are. And going up the hill now, we are seeing trails of water behind the cars so this is throwing a huge spanner in the works for many of the teams they will not have expected this and we've had no wet weather running at all but they're doing their best at the moment i'm very impressed jeremy everyone's pushing on they are indeed and you know it's the the, the thing is that the, the conditions are changing all the way around the racetrack constantly it really is a challenge for these drivers we see the two hondas are still leading in st with in third place Jason Rabe hanging on right with him. <laughs> Not too far behind there is uh, is uh, Jeff Mosley with Michael Johnson all over him ahead of Ethan Lowe in the number 34 Mazda. He's also now got past Chad McCombie and Sarah Catania has a slip back a fair way as well. One of the things that is going to be the issue with the 15 car, Jeremy, is not that he won't have the circuit, but all of his intakes are blocked with grass right the way up to the top what would normally, what I would call the radiator duct, but that feeds air through the hole of the car. Now, the pit lane team are telling us it is still sun shining, still very warm in the pit lane, but it's raining properly. And Scott Maxwell's gonna have to watch his temperatures because there's an awful lot of debris in the intakes at the front of that Shelby. Paul Holton leads, but only by a 10th of a second from Sebastian Landy. Danny Paquette has dropped away to 13 seconds. The two Hondas are just marching through the field at the moment yeah. and currently seventh, uh, eighth and ninth, but they're pulling Jason along with them in third position. Jeff Mosing in fourth, so only with a second and a half back. Then Michael Johnson in fifth, that is an outstanding drive. They'll yeah. be delighted they've got the power steering on that car now, well, feeling that a bit. And that's, yeah, that's the big, that's the only change they've made to the car since last time out, is to put power steering on the car uh, because it hadn't been a priority. Number 33 car is, uh, is in the pit lane. Danny Paquette in the pit lane, and, and also Liam Dwyer's car came in as well. Shea Adam, are the CJ Wilson team going to wet weather tyres? They are going to full wet as well for Liam Dreyer in the Freedom Autosport car. It's properly raining now. Out on the circuit here, there's all kinds of incident as the 99 car has gone around that was sebastian landy he had been scored in the lead for a moment but he's gone off at turn four now he's got a pointing in the right direction again paul holton's gone back through sebastian's dropped a lot of time there and Shea, can you just confirm it was tires and just a splash of fuel then for the 33. Yes, it, they just finished doing the tires, and it was indeed a splash, but John, it's raining so hard now that I can't even see turn one. Jim Roller is in the other end of pit lane. 
We've had the Porsches in, John. Uh, Jeff Mosing has just come in in the 56 car. Another one of the, uh, I think it's the number 25 Mazda just went through. So everybody's coming in and they are all going to full wets. It is rightly pelting down now here in the pit lane. But if you look all the way over to where the uh, hog pen is, there's still sun over there. The rain hasn't really gotten over there yet. The wind is picking up, thanks Jim. The wind is picking up as well and again blowing right down the pit lane from pit out to pit in. Sebastian Landy, by the way, had overtaken Paul Holton and then just completely lost it, trying to go through turn three. That was the spin. And a whole slew of cars coming in from the middle of the ST field, including that 56 Porsche. Chad McCumbie in the 25 Mazda, Nick Galante in the 17 Porsche. Phil Bloom in the 18 Porsche has gone through, but he's very slow. I think he may have had an incident out there as the lap times are going out. And now Danny Paquette is fighting his way through ST traffic. He's dropped behind uh, Boehm in the 92 Honda, which is still on slicks. And Danny will have to get the temperatures into those uh, uh, into those wet weather tyres from Continental. No tyre warmers allowed here as the eye of the storm is getting closer. I know that because the thunder is getting louder and the lightning is getting brighter and the rain is getting heavier. 73 mini off the circuit a moment or two ago as in comes Scott Maxwell and there's damage to the right rear. Shea Adam. There is damage and there is a load of grass that you mentioned, John. It is incredible how much grass can fit into the front of that car. It's not really any damage that should affect the handling of the car. The right rear quarter panel is pushed in and there is a lot of black on what was a very white Mustang Shelby beforehand, but the crew is just working. They've already finished refueling Scott Maxwell. Of course, no driver change is taking place yet up and down the pit lane because we have not reached the minimum time. Tire change going on now for the right rear of the Shelby. That's all they have left to do because they've already got the right front on as now the seven Rebel Rock race it's a flood down here on pit lane, John. This is reminiscent of Sebring this year. You can see the cars pushing bow waves. Uh, Danny Paquette has just gone through and there's a full course yellow. Full course yellow and off has gone the leading Honda on the front straight. He's just understeered off in the water and he's gone off on the slightest of right hand kinks. He was just about half a car's width offline. He's gone off onto the dirt. Yeah, there's oil down there, I think, as well, John. It's just absolutely like iced here on the front straight. There goes number 27 right. off the road Driving. as well. That's Danny Bender. Driving too quickly, Jeremy. Yep. That, that is through pools of water. And there goes the Michael Johnson car as well, I think, going sideways. It is a, tor a torrent of rain here. Look at the wind. The wind has picked up and it's blowing very, very hard this indeed. I'm going to flag. ask our pit lane reporters to come out of the pit lane now. And we're uh, going to say to those of you who are holding this out, it's time to seek shelter. There is lightning in the area. Uh, and Jim and Shea, I think uh, it's time for you two to be out of the pit lane seeking shelter as well. It is full course yellow at the moment. Uh, a number of incidents out on the circuit. I think Paul Holden is still on slick tyres out yeah. there. And how he's getting round, I don't know. But chapeau to him. Sebastian Landy also, I believe, still on slick tyres. Danny Paquette is still on the lead lap and has got wet weather tyres on. Now, this is all going to close up behind the safety car, of course. If they can see it. Huge drops of rain. The, it is absolutely extraordinary how this has changed so quickly. The 44 Nissan Altima pushing a bow wave in front of it. It can barely get speed up. As out goes the body motion number 12. You could boogie board behind these cars. There's enough water on the track to do that in front of us. Through goes one of the RS1. One of the European cars goes yeah. past when we came as uh, skateboards past us. Oh, huge off for the Audi. Uh, that is at the bottom yeah, of the this hill. Has to be red flag. And that's a that's an all-wheel drive car. Yeah. And that is uh, at the top of the hill through 14 and 15. The intervention vehicles are standing by. Anyone who's not on 
Lance on uh, wet weather tyres now is in real trouble and even those who are are finding it difficult because of the standing water. Now, the water, the rain is falling almost straight down now as for a moment that the gale force wind that was blowing has gone. It was horizontal, wasn't it, momentarily? It was also Sebastian Landy was off there as well. This is all at the top of the hill at the uh, at the roller coaster. Didn't see which one of the 360 Compass cars that was. Uh, Jim Roller is toughing it out somewhere. Uh, Jim, are you still out there? Well, yeah, it's uh, it was safer to stay where I was, frankly. I was undercover, and and it was just kind of safer to stay where I okay, was. Okay, that's the, fine. The, the wind is... Uh, the wind let up briefly, but it's picked back up. We've got uh, easily an inch of, uh, a half an inch of rain running down the pit lane, if not more. And out on the front straightaway, it's just lots of standing water. With this new asphalt, as you guys predicted, it is just all the oil is going to come up out of that, yep. out of yep. that tarmac, and it is just this place is going to be nightmarish for the next uh, 20 minutes or so until some of this water abates. You're undercover at the moment. Yeah. Oh God. I yes. can hear the rain on the roof of whatever you're standing under. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What? Well, stay where you are, Jim. Please. Uh, I'm not moving. Good man. Um, no other op uh, option for race control other than to throw a full course yellow well red flag would be the option quite frankly uh, yes I mean, it is absolutely ridiculous out there right now i mean even on wet tires the cars coming past here on the start finish line the cars are on wets which number 33 car number 15 they were virtually not mu much more than walking pace Still, uh, the majority of the top ten are still on slick tyres, yeah. Jeremy. Paul Holt and Sebastian Landy have both been off the circuit. Danny Paquette is the first car on wet. Uh, Scott Maxwell got out behind him before the full course yellow, so didn't lose too much ground uh, after that. So they are third and fourth. 76, 99, 33 and 15 are your top four. Uh, and then... It's uh, Jason Raber on the uh, 31 car yeah. who got ahead of the two Hondas after the issues well, with the Hondas. We're still waiting for them to come around, actually. They could, yes, they could have changed, <laughs> in fairness. We've got only four cars that have come past us to complete the 11th lap so far. Here comes the uh, 75 Audi. Was that the car that was off the road? I uh, it it was. was one of them, and I, I, can't, I couldn't tell which one. I think it was, because the 74 car went past a little while ago. Right, that, that will do for me. That looked like he'd had a bit of an impact on the rear of that car. And, yep, that'll do me. He's actually got away with it a lot. Does, looks all right, doesn't it? Yes, I thought there was bits of trim and all sorts flying off that car, so they've done better than I thought. You're listening to IMSA Radio, sound and vision in perfect harmony as... Even on the pit lane speed limiter, it looks pretty tricky going down the pit lane in front of us. We are on lap number 12. Two hours and two minutes to go of the 2 hours and 30 in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. And we have been hit with an absolute deluge here. Thunder and lightning in the air uh, around VIR. If you're on the circuit, please seek shelter. There is lightning in the air. This is uh, a decent sell blowing across, uh, roughly speaking, from east to west. Which but also is unusual coming, in itself. Yes, coming in from the south as well, in fairness, which is uh, what we saw certainly early on from the what happened on the ground. It sort of came in from the, the south and the east side of the circuit. The safety car is out, but frankly, the ST runners can't even get back to the back of the train there's some very very big and deep puddles and as they come through it is the 31 of well i'm not sure it is actually no it's the, the I, honda, I think came the honda's got, oh no the honda came through on this on this lap well ahead 31 has been scored in the lead ahead of the 92 46 73 the one that's missing is the 93 oh, right oh, okay fine that just came past that is a lap down that's right yeah so the 93 is off the lead lap after its issues out there. Uh, a goodly majority of those guys have not stopped yet. So they are trying to get around on slick tyres. In fact, all of the leading ST cars are still on slick tyres. Um, and I, uh, 
Again, I appreciate that the weather came in quickly, but there was a lot of people driving very quickly on slick tyres in very bad weather. The safety car out on the circuit as through goes the 09. Wind has changed direction completely now and is blowing from behind us at 90 degrees to where it was before. It was blowing straight from pit out to pit in before and now it's blowing directly across the pits from the pit purchase to the track, if that makes sense. This is very extreme weather indeed. We've got a mini very damaged Mini coming up through the Snake with right front and right rear damage. And I'm afraid I can't identify that car because it is just such terrible conditions in terms of vision. And as you might imagine, with uh, lightning in the air, our camera operators have been pulled to a place of safety. And thank you very much to the TV truck for locking off the cameras and giving us the onboards where you can and the locked off cameras where you can so that we've uh, still got a vision of the circuit, which is treacherous. We're under two hours to go here, and the Cayenne safety vehicles are out on the circuit, and even with their all-wheel drive and their raised ride height, they are finding it difficult. Emergency vehicles as well moving through the field at the moment. For what it's worth, here's how it stands. Paul Holton leads for the number 76 Compass 360 team. Sebastian Landy is second. Paul Mann pulled himself back off the side of the circuit. But even behind the safety car, they're a long way apart. Danny Paquette is third, and the red flag has come out. Yeah. The red flag has come out. There's no prospect of this changing anytime soon. And the clock continues at the moment to run on the eighth round of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge here at VIR. Yeah, the, there's no other option really to throw the uh, the red flag at this stage. I mean, you, you can't ask the marshals to stay out there, and you, and you have to have uh, corner marshals on the corners. Otherwise, uh, well, you have to have the period. So we're going to uh, lose the PA here as well in a moment uh, because of the conditions. Um, so listening on 89.9 FM or scanner frequency 454 will keep you up to date with what's going on. The cars are still picking their th way through the puddles. This yeah. is extraordinary. I've not seen conditions like this and conditions like this happening so quickly, Jeremy, for a very long time. Yeah, right. Yeah, and and uh, honestly, I'm surprised it took this long to get the red out there because there was no point in staying out there. It, literally, we've seen cars coming past here at walking speed, and barely that. Here comes Michael Johnson's car. I wonder where, where he got to. Yeah, he had a slide on the front stretch as well and went very, very sideways, just turning in in front of us. Well, I think he must have got it back without hitting anything because there didn't seem to be any damage. Uh, Imza telling us the red has been called as soon as the cars were in race order. Safety car was only at 15 miles an hour. Yeah. Well, the cars are now in along pit lane. It just seems a few moments ago that we had bright sunshine and great racing. Sebastian Landy doing excellent work at the head of the field from pole position. The ST start was extraordinary. A black Porsche going backwards, though, at the start of the race. The uh, unsponsored car in the middle of the pack. That's the, uh, the 22, isn't it? The... Chris Wright Racing, the Wright Automotive Group, didn't get the best of starts. Uh, 38 cars gone round again. He's not having uh, enough fun, huh? No, no, clearly not having enough fun. Uh, then the rain came. Uh, Scott Maxwell leading the race, spun off at Oak Tree and caused some damage to the right rear. And then pretty much everybody else was in just uh, survival mode. Number 99, Aston Martin, also has gone through uh, on the front straight, now has realised and is stopping, and that is the second-place car. 
Um, about to get a talking to, I think, from one of the safety vehicles. The Sebastian Landy car had the big off, which gave the lead back to Paul Holton. He holds on to that lead. Even the minis with their famed front wheel drive traction, but still on slick tyres. <laughs> Uh, we're finding it difficult, although there have been many cars that wouldn't have been able to pull themselves back on the track like the Mini did at turn number five and six. Yeah, Quite remarkable, actually, Jeremy, well, yeah. that we haven't lost anybody for, for good out in the boonies. Well, uh, if, if that is the case, it would be absolutely incredible because uh, I mean, we probably can't really see at the moment, but I mean, those We've are... sent out those search parties. Those, yeah, exactly. Those are the most difficult conditions I think I've ever seen. I I remember a race at Silverstone back in the 70s where there was the, the, the main straight was literally flooded and the cars going off everywhere. They actually cancelled the whole meeting. And that's not going to be the case today because Generally, we can only see the, brighter weather. We can see the end of the, of the weather yeah. front coming through. There's already blue sky and broken cloud coming back towards us, which seems remarkable that uh, we could be getting back racing anytime soon. Um, there is still a lot of cars in the pit lane who are on slick tyres. Now, at the moment, no one is allowed to touch those cars. It's what's called Park Fermé, closed situation. But I would assume that they will be allowed to change their tyres before the start without penalty because of the safety implications there. We've still got a couple of cars trying to make their way back around, having... Uh, <laughs> Missed, didn't quite get the memo. Yeah, I mean, your cars were taking more than six minutes to get around. Only time that I could honestly say I might have been quicker in the higher car. <laughs> Yeesh. That was just wild. But uh, if everybody has I, think I would have taken my S5 Quattro that we've got this week, uh, thanks to Audi yeah, you USA. You've skinny tyres on it, though, if you, if you had the preference. <laughs> I think I think the rubber that was on it would have been okay. <laughs> <laughs> the we're still waiting to get the last couple of cars back into the pit lane. Uh, Jim Roller, um, I'm seeing a bit of brightness in the sky uh, off to, I suppose, what would be the east side uh, of the racetrack, east and north of us. The sunshine lighting up some broken cloud. Yes, John, and looking at my weather radar here, the worst of it is about over, but there is a big band behind us. And with the wind, the wind is now switched yet again, and instead of blowing across the pit lane, it is now blowing up the pit lane. So that could, in fact, bring the bottom of this storm uh, to us. So we may have rain for a little while longer. The key thing for the television pictures is the general rule of thumb is that you cannot put the cameras out until there has been 20 minutes clear with no lightning within, I think it is a five or eight mile radius of the circuit. So we will be, as long as we keep hearing thunder, we're going to be uh, at least not have any pictures for then another 20 minutes or so. So it's, uh, and there's another clap of thunder. So we could be sitting this out for a, a little while. This could, uh, it's still raining hard. The rain hasn't abated at all. Uh, it's just weird to see blue sky and white puffy clouds. Yeah, absolutely. The irony is, thanks, Jim, is if I wasn't here, I'd be sitting at home in central England and rocking in British touring cars, which is about 15 miles from our house, had lightning storms and a Janetta race cancelled due to a mini tornado, and uh, not 15 minutes from where I live normally, um, back in the UK. So clearly this is my fault. Uh, the Hindoff has again been the harbinger of doom. I don't think I actually went to a, a circuit for at least two or three years where we didn't have rain, uh, including going to Abu Dhabi. Uh, Jim Roller suggesting Imza standing as far as he's concerned uh, to, for I'm soaked again. <laughs> oh, James. Sorry. We, we must get you some Continental Tire uh, rubber footwear galoshes. Some kind. Something. Yes. There must be something. Shea's shoes are dry. She's got a new balance on. So, if you have just joined us, expecting to hear Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Racing, uh, everyone's in the pits. 
because it is pouring of rain. The track surface is already improving from how it was. It's uh, lightning. The lightning and thunder is passing over. We've uh, still got cars trying to make their way back to the pit lane and uh, turn in at the end of 14. The uh, 99 cars now got six laps on the field. It's been going around so many times. This is like the old Hans Stuck story, isn't it? At Daytona in the... Uh, the IMSA days with the Quattro, where they tried to bring hands in several times after the red flag was thrown, but the weather and the visibility through the front window was so bad he never saw the flag. He just kept on driving round, and eventually, when he realised there was no more cars back yet, he came into the pit lane, and when they said to him, why didn't you stop to see the red flag? He said, see, the red flag couldn't see anything out of the windscreen. I was leaning out of the side window to drive it. There would have been other words in there that I've taken out from Stucky, obviously. <laughs> Colourful character. Yes, that was. Uh, this was. This was probably close to as bad as that. I mean, yeah. uh, it really was uh, torrential out there, and just incredible how quickly the weather can change here. The, the rain is eased to uh, me sensible proportions. Merely biblical now, yes. And uh, there was a man down at turn one who was knocking a boat together for a moment there. That was uh, amazing, just how much Noah. standing water there was. Noah Industries, Inc. there. Um, just how much standing water there is on the uh, starting line as well. If you're listening to us around the circuit on 89.9 FM or scanner frequency 454, stay tuned. We'll let you know as soon as we can what is happening uh, in terms of the racing itself. Pretty much a lake in the uh, in behind the pit wall here, down in front of us. I can, you can probably hear, that's the effect mics from the cameras that you can hear. We're not actually doing any deep frying here. That is still rain falling. Jim Roller still undercover, further up the uh, pit lane. I'm, it's very easy for me to say, but it does look like the, the rain has eased from ridiculous to merely, merely really, really, really heavy. Yeah, now it's just raining. <laughs> <laughs> the visibility's better as well, actually. Oh, yeah, I can now see. Before, I could not, uh, I, I couldn't see the break in the pits. Ooh, that was lightning that was awfully close over on the back side of the racetrack. I hate it when you can see it. Having survived a hurricane once, was, you, you ri ride one of those out one time, fellas, and then you'll really understand what scared is. But anyway, the. Um, yeah, it is. It's now just raining and not really raining that heavily, so uh, this will pass. This too shall pass, they always say, and I think in this case it's almost over. Just looking at the IMSA safety vehicle. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. The uh, Cayman, the, the Cayenne rather, GTS going past us, uh, and now the amount of water that has. Uh, dissipated from the front straight is pretty impressive actually because there was nowhere near the amount of water being moved by the vehicle as it was going through this time as it was maybe just two laps ago they're continuing to circulate and reporting back to our race director Bo Barfield I'd be surprised actually if Bo doesn't jump in a car uh, one of perhaps one of the uh, fast lap cars and go out there and have a look himself he tends to be very hands-on when it comes to these things a very proficient racer in his day Bo Barfield raced up to uh, did, Indy, did Lights. Atlant Indy Lights Atlantics yeah Got a race in Indy Lights yeah uh, the second of the Cayenne's going through and um, you know and with it being so warm still uh, the track will dry fairly quickly so you know as soon as the thunder is out of the area thunder and lightning is out of the area we can certainly think uh, about starting to get back to racing before too long but as Jim says it's probably going to be another 15 20 minutes it's I best. think the standing water as well was the yeah, issue but that, that'll clear away pretty quickly well it's, it's almost gone from the front straight yes, that's yeah. remarkable um, and 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 the pits uh, yeah yeah, the pit yeah, lane. There's was no more hard. running water in the pits, which is. It was it was a stream before, and now yeah. it's just asphalt well, sprinkling. I, you know, I, at the risk of stating the obvious, um, we were commenting earlier, weren't we, on the beautiful greenery around us? Uh, that doesn't happen without uh, the odd splash or three, uh, and it's clearly also helping to drain the water from the circuits. The uh, areas around the track that is another advantage as far as i'm concerned of having uh, grass greenery and trees um rather than 
large paved runoff areas. It does allow the water to, uh, to drain away back to the water table. Uh, Shea Adam has uh, gone back out into the element, Shea. Yeah, it's, it's lightly sprinkling now, and uh, not the kind of sprinkles you put on ice cream, but there is a great deal of standing water, particularly on the pit lane, on the side where the crews keep their tires, their air jacks, their equipment, and uh, there's a couple inches in the C360R box. The pit lane itself is actually almost dry in terms of a standing water level. There's not a great deal and it's moving off really quickly. Some of the pit boxes like the Rebel Rock guys, Should've it's already dry. I was here earlier, James <laughs> Roller. I was standing in the hurricane with you. <laughs> so my, my shoes have uh, proof. I think uh, thanks to CJ Wilson guys and New Balance, but I think I'm going to need a new pair after this race. <laughs> Yeah, and can we have Wellingtons next time, please? Uh, thank you to our Continental Tire Pit Lane team, and um, well, thanks for your hard work. This is uh, when it really gets difficult out there. Uh, Jim and Shea, uh, Jeremy and I have the easy job. We sit in the broadcast booth and uh, wait for us to bring us warm coffee. Uh, people to bring us warm coffee. Just looking at one or two areas, the there's a couple of places on the racetrack that are going to need to be cleared. One, just upstream, literally, of the Michelin crossover bridge, um, where the there's a just beyond there, there's a bit of the circuit turn seven that goes into what's called the Patriot circuit. They're just about 1.1 mile um, separate circuit in the middle. There's a cut off there, and the water's running down from the Patriot mm. circuit on the hard standing and then just across the track and pooling up there and that clearly uh, it will be of concern to the uh, race control so red flag now uh, already for something in the region of 22 minutes 23 minutes a little bit more than that in fact as the uh, elements have taken control for the moment here at VIR the rain is still falling, but far less heavy than it was before. There's a gathering of officials and team members down in the pit lane. Let's uh, have a quick word with Danny Baquette out of the 33. He was one of the first of the leaders to come in along pit lane four the wet weather continental tires jim roller so uh, how fun was that you know uh not very much fun to be perfectly honest it's uh kind of like a monsoon out there to be uh to be frank so there's definitely a lot of puddles and race control made the right call by pulling this into a red flag now you were one of the first to come in for the uh, rain tires was that your decision or did the crew go uh, this is going to get really bad you better get in you know, it was one of those where I was driving down the back stretch and I was going up the uphill S's and the car got a whole lot of bit sideways on me. So I said, guys, we're coming in. And it was one of those things where we were just, OK, why are you on the track and doing it really quickly? But my crew did an awesome job on the stop and got the tires on fast. So for us, it was the perfect strategy to come in as soon as the rain started. And, uh, you know, it was a team effort to get us back out. Now, what's going to be the plan when we get started again? Uh, you're, you're going to obviously start on wet weather tires. Um, it'll be interesting to see how quickly this racetrack dries out. What's your, uh, what, what's your plan? Well, we're going to see what race control has to say about when we're going to go back green again. But, uh, yeah, depending on when we get going green and if the clock stops, the next, driver, the next pit stop will be a driver change. All right, good luck. Thank you very much. Chad Gilsinger, we know that your Honda is good in the dry. Clearly, that was a pretty fun start. You getting to run with teammate Kevin Baum. But what do you have for the wet? Actually, to be honest, we were kind of hoping for the wet. But honestly, I wasn't hoping for it to be this bad. Uh, you know, our car struggles here with the humidity and the high heat. So we were kind of hoping for rain to cool things down a little bit. Obviously, being front wheel drive, the, the car is pretty good in the wet here. Um, but you know, this was, this was unheard of. Uh, we were just getting ready to pit for wets because we thought it was time and then they closed the pits because I think some people went off and we just got caught out and all we could do was just stay on the track. You know, I'm glad everybody's safe right now. Um, you know, hopefully either they'll wait till the weather breaks or they'll let us switch the reins. But uh, right now I'm just glad to be back in the pits. Back in the pits, but still in the car with your helmet on, ready to go as soon as they let you. How quickly will you be coming back around to get on to wet tires or will they leave you out on slicks? 
Uh, it's really going to depend on how long this takes, how long it rains. You know, if it, if it dries out quickly and it looks like there's no more rain, we might tough it out. I don't know. I'll leave it up to the crew guys for that. I'll just be giving them updates on what the track's like once we go back out. But uh, I don't mind sitting in the car. I'd rather be sitting in the car than stuck in the weeds. So. Good attitude from Chad Gilsinger. And, of course, as soon as he says that, it starts raining harder. Paul Holton is uh, sitting at the front of the line. Uh, Paul, you still got slicks on, my friend. That was uh, one heck of a performance. How'd you keep this thing on the racetrack? Um, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't going to tell everybody about all the grass on the side here. Come on. Well, you know, I think it was the lap before we went full course yellow. No, it was the lap that we went full course yellow. Came down the front straight, and as soon as you get to the little bend in it before it start finishes, the entire car hides your plane went straight off as a passenger. Buried the throttle, did a 360, and managed to get it back on track. Um, you know, it was fun for a minute there with Sebastian. We were having a good little battle going back and forth. The two Spec Miata kids. That was really fun. <laughs> now, you're going to have to come in for slick or for uh, rain tires once this thing gets back going again, aren't you? Um, absolutely. Um, you know, this thing's a handful. Even, even on that, I think we did like a 9 or 10 minute lap coming in there. Uh, just even going in like 10 miles an hour, this thing's sliding all over the place. I couldn't see out the windshield. I'm looking out the side mirror to see where the edge of the track is to be able to drive. All right. Well, you uh, keep it on the black stuff, will you? I'll try my best. Thank you. Danny Bender, you certainly have an interesting theory for how to keep it on the black stuff, the number 27 Mazda MX-5. What was it that you were looking through to see the track? Yeah, it was uh, crazy out there. It was like a monsoon going uh, into turn one. Got to the point where it was raining so hard I couldn't see anything. I had uh, was looking out the side window for the track limit and just riding the white line on the outside of the track limit, uh, trying to find my way around. Um, I got to say, that's unlike anything I've ever uh, experienced in a race car before. And you also got a shower while you were driving, too. Your uh, air cooling system not working the way it was supposed to? Actually, I'd say it's working almost better than expected. It's like a nice cool-down shower in here. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's so hot that a lot of cars put the air hoses in there to cool us down. And, fortunately, it allowed the water to come through and uh, pour on me. But it's kind of refreshing. It was a really good qualifying performance from you yesterday. You feel like maybe this rain will help you carry the momentum forward into a podium? I sure hope so. Um, you know, Freedom Autosport gave me an awesome, awesome car for qualifying, uh, put in the top 10, which was great. Um, you know, I love the rain. It's, uh, it's, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, with a little bit of wet track, uh, you know, able to use uh, some of that previous knowledge, you know, running in the rain before and uh, bring it up front, you know, give uh, Britt and uh, Casey Jr., my co-driver, a good car and let him do his thing. And the other interesting thing, you're still on slicks, so good luck out there, Danny. Nick Galante, you and Spencer Papelli came into this race with the series point lead, and then Mother Nature just uh, decided she was going to dump on you big guys big time. What was it like out there? Uh, for, a, for a couple laps there, we couldn't see anything. I mean, we had a good start, and everything was looking pretty good, and I was moving through the field, but then, uh, you know, wall of rain. And uh, I'll tell you what, I literally couldn't see 10 feet in front of me. Cars were just driving off the track at literally one mile an hour. It was uh, quite a sight, and uh, somehow we survived and uh, got guided somehow back here to the pits, and uh, we're doing okay now. We got our rain tires on, um, and so we're looking okay that way. Uh, the rest of the field's going to need to, to do that soon, but um, we'll see if we go green here soon, and we'll move our way back towards the front. Now, you're sitting here uh, all buckled in, uh, fairly dry with your helmet on and everything else. What's it like waiting it out? A uh, little heat soak? Is it still warm in there? It's just, uh, you know, before it was hot, and now it's just extremely humid. I feel <laughs> like we're in the middle of a jungle now. It's just uh, everything's hot still and humid now. You got your drinks bottle? I got a good drink bottle. I got the Hammer Nutrition going. You ever tried that stuff? No, I haven't. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, yeah, I feel good. All right. Well, hang in there. Good luck. If you're just joining us, you're listening to IMSA Radio and we're synced in sound and vision at IMSA.tv on the IMSA app uh, and also on uh, RadioLamont.com. We're under red flag conditions. Trackside, uh, the conditions have been appalling and the uh, weather has blown through. The worst of the weather, we're told, has blown through. There's a little more rain in the air, but the monsoon conditions that we had that left race control with no opportunity to do anything else other than to get the cars into pit lane once they had them in the race order 
Uh, that has blown through. There's still standing water on the track. We hear there's uh, some timing loop issues as well with the uh, that the weather has caused. They are being looked at at the moment. Let's go back down to our Continental Tire pit lane crew who are working the line along pit lane. Shea Adam has Chad McCumbie. Chad, the team was just talking to you there over the radio, giving you some indication of uh, when you'll be able to go back out. Yeah, you know, I think it's still uh, still a little up in the air. That was a lot of rain really fast, but uh, our got... Freedom guys made a great call with our Mod Space Mazda, got us in uh, before the, the monsoon hit and got some rain tires on this thing. And we were actually starting to make up a, a lot of ground there um, as the track's looking up. So uh, Mod Space car's working really good. Um, trying to keep it straight out there right now and, and see what develops. Definitely a little different race than we anticipated. You mentioned that uh, there are some puddles out on track, though, when we were talking just a few moments ago and said that that's going to be a big issue. Uh, how many did you notice around the circuit and what parts were the worst? Uh, there was, uh, at are times you, you felt like you were hydroplaning the entire way around. So, no, there's, there's a couple trouble spots for sure. Um, pretty hard to pick them out because it, there was quite a few. I think it just dumped so much rain so quick it had nowhere to go. So, um, I'm sure that stuff will drain out a little bit and uh, get, get some of those cars. Uh, out from stuck in the mud and and see how the track develops here but um, definitely you know it, it's it's going to turn into a really interesting race here at the end looks like it's clearing up over there uh, toward our uh, toward our northeast and just have to see what happens hopefully we can keep that uh, mod space car up front and, and get another podium well one of the last times we had really bad range on was uh, Watkins Glen and that's when uh, Chad found the cushion Oh, yes, I remember that very well indeed. Jim Roller, where are you in the uh, line of cars in the fast lane? Uh, going nowhere fast at the moment in Pitlin. Well, I'm with Liam Dwyer, who uh, is a Marine, and he's prepared for most everything. Uh, were you prepared for this, though? Well, Marines being amphibious is supposed to be prepared for anything. <laughs> um, no, not, not the deluge that we got. You know, rain is fine, but when the deluge came, the visibility went from, you know, decent to, to naught in, you know, about 2.3 seconds. And it was actually so bad, I couldn't see the track in front of me. And as many other drivers, I must have passed four or five cars out there. They were off in the raspberry somewhere doing some picking. I was able, fortunately, to keep the car in one piece. I drove off myself a few times. But, you know, I kept the car on track as best as I could, and we're sitting here in pit lane. Hopefully this thing will go green soon. Now, fans who aren't familiar with Liam's story, he lost his left leg in Afghanistan, and he was showing me how he has uh, gotten his prosthesis so that uh, it is attached to the clutch on the car, and he's got a, a special pin that when it comes time, there's a cotter pin that holds his uh, his prosthesis in, on the clutch, and so when it's time for the driver change, he, he's got a special release that pulls that off, and uh, but the rest is just regular heel and toe for you, and then you work the clutch with your left leg. He's uh, being taught talk to on the on the radio we really appreciate the teams and drivers uh, letting us uh, uh, have these moments with their with their charges uh, so uh, other other than other than the, the having to release the cotter pin it's just regular heel toe for you yeah it's just regular heel toe and obviously with the left leg being attached to the clutch pedal no left leg braking for me left foot braking and one of these these boss mx5s is suffering from something called knockback so what you have to do when you come to a heavy brake zone uh, like on the back straightaway there is you actually have to take your left foot and tap the brakes to reset the pads. Well, I can't do that. So my crew made me this little fancy contraption here. As you can see, the brake pedal movement as I move my hand here. So it allows me basically just to tap the brakes back into place. And it actually works very well. And we haven't had any issues with it since. Well, ingenious. And uh, you're certainly uh, an inspiration to, to all of us. Semper Fi, my friend. Semper Fi. We're talking to the drivers in pit lane at the moment. Um, Andy Lally apparently is going for a wakeboard world record in a moment <laughs> out there behind one of the uh, Cayman G uh, the Cayenne GTSs. If we get if we, if we get him a bit of plywood and uh, uh, and a, a drag line, he'll be he'll be out there um, doing something. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much to El Burry for tweeting that at IMSA Radio, 89.9 FM and scanner frequency 454 as well as on the IMSA app and IMSA.com, RSL Extra uh, and the rest of the RSL network. Uh, red flag conditions still prevailing here. And uh, now over half an hour of red flag conditions as we uh, wait for this uh, cell of weather to pass over us. Shea Adam is down in the pit lane, Shea. 
There are quite a few cars with uh, a lot of damage, John, and one of them is the 37 Mini. We saw a Mini go off before the red flag happened. I would uh, put two and two together and think that that was the one that wound up meeting a wall, but I was talking to Chad McCombie around driver's side of his car, then walking back up the pit lane a little bit, I noticed that the running board uh, area of the number 25 Freedom Autosport MX-5 is dragging on the ground. The number 44 Nissan, uh, the CRG I Do Borrow car, has a bit of damage to the left front headline headlight area, but it really shouldn't affect it too badly. Some crew members now are allowed to come out to the car and bring some rags out to the drivers to try and clean out the windshield. You're seeing a few up and down the pit lane. Don't worry, as uh, crew guys are dumping water off the top of their awnings to try and keep things from collapsing. The rain is continuing to fall harder even though the sky is getting lighter. Yeah, time for you guys, I think, to seek shelter again now. Just watching the rear and rear dar. There is a, uh, another bit of nasty weather to blow through in a moment or two's time. So I, I'd like you two to seek some shelter now before you uh, get even wetter than the otter's pocket uh, that you're probably as wet as at the moment. Jeremy, uh, nothing to do but to wait this one out. What we're waiting for from race control is, uh, with 90 minutes left to go, some steer on what will happen in terms of uh, driver times, potentially points for the championship. But the, the clock still runs at the moment. Uh, in terms of the championship, if it was stopped now, um, Danny Paquette would, uh, and the C.J. Wilson team, would get an advantage over the guys that they're chasing down, but only by a couple of positions. And obviously, it would depend whether full points were awarded as to uh, how much that uh, championship lead was eaten into. True, yeah. Uh, and uh, it would, uh, you know, potentially, if, if the race w was to finish now, which I don't think is likely, hopefully uh, it'll, it'll move on past and allow us to get back to racing. But uh, Paul Holton, he has had one win before, so this would be his second victory in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. And uh, he certainly did a magnificent job in those really, really, really treacherous conditions. He and Sebastian Landy going back and forth there and uh, uh, trading fastest laps. Yeah, it was ma absolutely magnificent. I mean, those were really tricky. I mean, for a couple of laps there, the, it started sprinkling with rain and then it got harder and, and it was moving around a bit. And then finally, those last couple of laps were absolutely beyond treacherous. Um, but uh, they, 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 you know, they managed to get it, get it get uh, get those cars back here to pit lane and they're, they're, they're lying first and third. Danny Biquette uh, is uh, actually first and second, I think. Um, although Danny Biquette is actually shown as third in the lineup. I'm not quite sure why that is because, uh, anyhow. Uh, uh, Landy went off just before the... Uh, yeah, he, he came past here in, in second right, place. Okay. So anyhow, but whatever it is, um, uh, Scott Maxwell then would be fourth. Those, those four cars then... Uh, are miles ahead, were miles ahead of the rest. The next being the uh, the Hondas uh, of uh, Chad Gilstring and uh, Kevin Beam, and and uh, the number 31 car had split those two before the red flag was sh was shown. Um, and the uh, the other contenders, we saw the, a few other cars onto pit lane. So the first two, Halton and Landy, are still on slicks. Burkett and Maxwell have changed to wet weather tyres. Has has the, the uh, next car in line in in uh, GS, which would be Cameron Castles. He also, I think, is on wet weather tyres and a little bit farther down the order. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, Ted Giovannis, he, he managed to stay out there. He hasn't been in the pits either. So three of the five uh, have changed onto wet weather tyres. Anybody who got to the pits before the yellow was thrown got to put the, the wet weather tyres on. Of course, as soon as the yellow was thrown, the pits were closed. And that means nobody could come in. Although they were slowing down, it was still uh, a situation there that you couldn't have got into the pit lane without taking some kind of penalty. But uh, Burkett and Maxwell both in and out before the yellow flags, uh, well, both in, and Scott Maxwell coming out just as the yellow flags uh, came out. But uh, Danny Burkett had got back around uh, to take that position from him. A lot of work going on on various areas of the track to uh, release water and let it run down the inclines here. Also the pylons and sensors for the timing gear, some of which have been affected by the extreme weather. They're being looked at 
uh, as well. At IMSA Radio, please, for your comments. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, 8 o'clock back in the UK, 9 o'clock in Europe on a Saturday evening here at VIR. Coming up to 3 o'clock exactly in the afternoon with skies overhead having darkened for a few moments' time. But again, the eternal optimist in me looks at reflection of sunlight on higher cloud that is broken off to the left-hand side to the uh, right-hand side, rather, of the circuit, to the eastern side. The wind has dropped to virtually nothing now. E extraordinary the way the wind at ground level has shifted. Now, I appreciate that that doesn't always affect the weather higher up. Um, ground level winds tend to be very different from the prevailing winds at uh, altitude, as any pilot will tell you. But uh, we've now got the flags at uh, literally 180 degrees from where they were 15 minutes ago. It was blowing from behind the pits out onto the circuit. Now it's blowing from across the circuit back into the pit lane. And so the wind is all over the place here uh, at the moment, just uh, underlining how difficult it is for the uh, race control here to make any decisions that might stick based on what is potentially going to happen. They're really, the only option now is to sit it out and wait for the rain to stop or at least to ease to a level that would allow the cars to get out on circuit safely and then start clearing some water with the slick tyres. The issue is the standing water, I think, rather than the rain that's falling uh, at the moment. But there's some severe weather still to come our way, I think. Uh, well, if the weather radar is anything to go by, at least... Uh, another 10 minutes or so before I think we can make any kind of decision about what's happening. Yeah, it's, it's really strange looking at the w weather radar. It's just a sort of one little blob above us. There's another one uh, down around about... Uh, around Cary. Yeah. Just south of Cary. Yeah, south of uh, of, of Raleigh. Uh, and then over in Winston-Salem as well, there's a, there's another cell down there, another one perhaps over you know, just south of Greensboro. So uh, they're all f they're all uh, pretty widespread. Um, it's not, they're not all linked together. And that's, that's kind of the weird thing. And it's just sort of circulating around at the moment. It seems to be coming, uh, it wasn't originally coming from the, from the west and then it from, the, from the east again. And it's just sort of circulating around us and, uh, and not really moving very far. The IMSA intervention vehicles continue to circulate, keeping an eye on the track conditions. Uh, not much more than we can report at the moment, no. I'm afraid. I mean, probably 10 miles north of here, it's probably all uh, well, pretty I'm much clear. Funny enough, I've just had a, a, a tweet from Aaron Stoller. Hello, Aaron. Thank you for tweeting us here at uh, IMSA Radio. He says, if you could send some of that rain you've got up to us in northern Virginia, it's dreadfully hot and humid up here. Uh, and, you know, certainly if you're up at Roanoke or anywhere around that sort of area, you'll be in gorgeous weather uh, at the moment. Richmond, similar, no sort of uh, issues there. It's just this band uh, at the uh, around us here, and then a little bit further south, what uh, 60 miles south or so, down at Durham, a bit further south from that, Cary and uh, Raleigh. I could only imagine what uh, nightmares have been caused with uh, air traffic out of Raleigh, Durham, one of the uh, big hubs around here. Winston, Salem and Greensboro are not getting uh, it all their own way either. GSO Airport there will be uh, suffering just a, a little bit. Uh, an hour and 22 minutes still to go as the clock continues to count down. We had the cars in the pit lane just after the half hour mark had passed. So we've already had 40 minutes with the cars standing still. And no action on the circuit. For those of you here at the track, tuned in on 89.9 FM and 454, our scanner frequency, we will get the news to you as soon as we can from uh, Race Control. We are linked to them here uh, in the broadcast suite, but uh, no word at the moment about any decisions being made. The track conditions being constantly monitored and as, it, as just as a little bit of a... Uh, additional problem they've uh, got some timing beacons that they need to attend to as well 
and that has been uh, done in the last few minutes. We are aware of the sweeper is out and the tractor trying to get rid of some of the standing water on start finish. The good news is we haven't had any thunder and lightning for a wee while. No, that's been a few minutes. There was one, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so ago that uh, appeared to have kind of moved off a little bit toward the west because it certainly looked I mean, look We've now got the blue east, sky yeah. and, and very yeah. high cloud uh, yeah. off to the north and east. Yeah. problem is that this, uh, this sort of cell is just sort of located you know, around us and, and to the south and a little bit more to the west. Um, but it's just, uh, it's not really making any progress. It's not moving away. It's not, you know, affecting any other area uh, within 30-mile radius of us. Nasty-looking weather just to the north of us. Very dark grey clouds. Um, yeah, and it's sure showing some lightning strikes isn't it, on that radar yeah, screen. Yeah, and, the, and uh, as Jeremy says, it's just hanging there. It doesn't uh, seem to be moving overly. No, you couldn't, I mean, you couldn't centre it more, uh, more than it has been right now over, over VIR. No, I mean, if we were up at Martinsville, we'd be out of it, is, yeah. is, is what we're talking about. And that's, what, 60, 65 miles away. Uh, he, here's how it stands, then, in terms of the lineup. The Ford of Paul Holton, the 76 car, uh, leads out from Danny Paquette in second, the 33, then Sebastian Landy in third, the 99 in... ST, oh yes please, I've been <laughs> offered chocolatey things, it'd be rude not to uh, have it a would. go, thank you very much David, um, the, could get me a black coffee, <laughs> <laughs> what? pushing your luck here, uh, the, the, as far as ST's concerned, it is Chad Gilsinger, who we lost for a, a little while ago, uh, on the timing of scoring, but has reappeared, yeah, we lost three or four cars in the top 10 in, in SC. The 34 car and number 27 uh, disappeared for a little while, but they're both back now in the in the uh, scoring uh, rotation. So it is the number 93 Honda and number 92 car splitting, or, or split by, I should say, Jason Rabe in that body motion car number 31, the Porsche Cayman. Fourth place in the class. Ninth overall is uh, Ethan Lowe in number 34 Mazda for Alara Racing. Then Danny Bender. We heard from him, the uh, Mazda car salesman from the Chicago area, doing a good job there, having his best run of the season so far. Did a good job to keep, uh, I don't know about keeping his nose clean, but keeping the car o on the black stuff for the for the most part. In car number 27 for Freedom Autosport. In the fifth position, followed by Derek Jones in the Mini. He'd be moving up. Uh, he did a good job in uh, to keep to keep that car on the black stuff. James Clay. Uh, who had to start at the back of the field in ST in car number 84. That's the Bimmer World BMW. They had uh, some problems after qualifying. Uh, maximum permitted negative camber on uh, on the wheels on that car. So uh, he was put to the back. He worked his way very impressively through to, uh, to seventh position in ST. Head of Chad I McCumbie. And Chad McCumbie in car number 25, he's the first of the SD contenders to have already made a pit stop for wet weather tyres. Uh, my boyish enthusiasm might be running away with me, but I'm going to check in with our continental tyre pit lane reporters because I think I can hear engines fired, Chip. Can you hear that? That's a Mazda. That is a Mazda. That's the number 34 <laughs> Mazda has fired up. Thanks to the Hart guys. They've let me hide under their tent during that last storm. Good chat with uh, Ryan Eversley and Cameron Lawrence. Both of them getting ready to get into the car pretty soon after we get back into green flag conditions. But it's almost stopped raining entirely at this point in the uh, forthcomings. And we are going to have more engines fired soon. A uh, couple of seconds ago, John, I said in your ear that we had an engine fired. It was the 19 who was very quickly told to turn the engine back off. But now we have uh, pretty much half the pit lane down towards pit in who are fired up and ready to go. Still sprinkling, but yes, they are firing them up. Officials are going down. Now they're holding up three fingers. Could that mean three minutes, perhaps? One can only hope. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. A amazing the transformation, just the, the sky lightning. Everything looks lightening, rather lightning. Uh, the sky lightening up and, and just being a bit brighter just makes everything look nicer. 
And uh, so I was eating a brownie at that point. Jim threw back to me at the inopportune moment. The, uh, the good news is, though, that we uh, are hearing engines firing and cars being warmed up. There's still an hour and 15 on the clock. And we'll get news from race control uh, as we are connected to them uh, with the same messaging system that the teams have. And uh, thanks to Paul Barfield and Race Control for letting us in on that system. So we will get the same messages that the teams get with regard to driver times, etc. As the most beautiful blue and uh, white, blue sky and white clouds are drifting towards us now. The rain is still falling, although at a much lesser rate. It's a drizzle now more than anything else. There's spectators making their way back down onto pit lane. Not sure if we fired the PA uh, back uh, on pit lane. I don't know if our Continental Tire pit lane team can take an ear off. So we are talking to you here uh, on the PA system as well as 89.9 .9 and scanner frequency 454. Um, thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen, both here at the track and further afield, as it appears that we are getting close to resuming some kind of action. What I'd expect to see is a couple of laps behind the safety car uh, before we think of doing anything. It may well be that the pits are then opened as well uh, so that the guys who are on dry weather tyres can get them changed. Yeah, and that's going to be really interesting because, uh, you know, the, the track's going to... Once we there's get no back to racing, here, we should say. there's no intermediate tyres. Yeah. You're either wet tyres or dry tyres. That's a very good point, uh, John Hindoff. That's one thing. And you know, it's certainly it's too it's certainly too wet for slicks right now. But the track is going to dry out fairly quickly. It is warm uh, once the rain stops completely and, and the cars get running on it. Uh, it won't be that long. So is anybody going to be brave enough to stay out there on the slicks? Probably not, but uh, everybody is, is going to have to come on again into the pit lane in any case to change drivers. So uh, certainly, you're having if you've got wet tires on the car now, that is going to be a pretty big advantage. But they are have to going to be uh, they're going to have to make their way to pit lane as well to change drivers at some stage during this race. So things beginning to come back to life trackside here at VR. You're listening VIR. You're listening to IMSA Radio. Live from Trackside, we have sound and vision together here on IMSA.tv. Um, there's still water under some of the awnings, Jeremy. <laughs> Just a little bit. The Magnus Racing awning right in front of us, still with a good couple of inches of water sitting around. With uh, there's a young man with a broom there. Who, that's, that's a good two inches, if not more. The, the problem is he's, he's pushing it out and it's just coming straight back. It's got nowhere to go. There isn't a drain area for him to get it out to. The sunshine returns to VIR. If you aren't already, we do have pictures on IMSA.com, IMSA.TV, the IMSA app, and on RadioLamont.com where available. Shea Adam, this is an interesting one, uh, isn't it? Um, because we're hearing there's five minutes to getting back under yellow, uh, possibly a little bit longer. The track workers are going back out to their post now. Um, we know this is a grippy circuit, even when wet, clearly, because people have survived. Are, are there people seriously considering not going to wet here, Shea? There are, and the interesting thing is it's not just one or two teams. I've checked in with about five teams, and they've all said, we're thinking about it. But the big question is we've been talking about for, I don't know, the last 20 minutes, the track surface is new. People don't really know what to expect mm. from it at this point. So these laps, when we go back to yellow, are going to be crucial for tire decisions. But a lot of teams have both slicks and wets prepared to go on the car, and it probably is going to be a game time decision who would have thought an hour ago with that rain that we would even be considering going to slicks the 
Yes, that's very interesting. Well, now, let, let's just run through the timeline here for those people who have either forgotten, uh, have short-term memory loss like me, um, or are just joining us to tune into the last hour and 11 minutes of the Connell Tire Sports Car Race. We started on time. Uh, Sebastian Landy did a great job of defending at the front of the field for four or five laps until he made a, a little mistake coming uh, through turn three and through went Scott Maxwell. Then the rain came down. Scott Maxwell spun out of the lead at the Oak Tree turn. Uh, the Paul Holton and Sebastian Landy stayed out. Danny Paquette dropped back from them and was the first of the GS cars to come into the pit lane for wet weather continental tyres. He did that and was just coming round uh, and in fact had just passed start finish line and gone past the 15 car which was in the pits as the yellow came out. I'm pretty sure, sure the 15 got in before the yellow came came out to do its uh, got in to do its to, to do its change. So those done, are the yes, he'd done his pit stop before it changed. Yeah, yeah to, yes. to yellow. Yes, absolutely. So just the uh, 33 and the 15 on wet weather tyres at the front of the field. In fact, they are the only two of the top. 12 cars because none of the leading ST cars with the two Hondas and the Porsche 93, 92 Honda and the 31 Porsche uh, out there in front of Ted Giovannis in his GS car. So those guys had uh, the front wheel drive Hondas and uh, got to say an absolutely fantastic drive by those, in fact, all three of those guys on slick tyres, just tippy toeing their way through uh, to knocking on the door of the top four. Chad Gilsing, who is actually in fifth position overall. From what we can work out, we think the first car in ST on wet weather tyres is Chad McGumby down in eighth position Correct. in the 25 car. He's the first one that's made two pit stops and Jeff Morsing came in at about the same time, I think, yes. and is sitting in behind him in the bright orange 56 car. Um, we did have an off under yellow for Sarah Catania. And that dropped the Nissan way down. But she has not changed on to wet weather tyres. That's as much as we can tell you. The thunder and lightning caused the TV crews to be pulled in, then the excessive rain left the race control and our race, conduct, race director with no option but to get the cars firstly under yellow to try and get them into some semblance of order, which was difficult enough because the, it was actually difficult to... Uh, it was difficult enough for the cars to catch up the train and mind sort of shuffle, shuffle them around. Uh, and then eventually when they were in some form of order, straight into the pit lane, the red flag was thrown. And that happened some 40 minutes ago, a little more than that now. Uh, we are coming down towards the 60 minutes to go mark. And as soon as we have any information... Uh, about what will be going on, we will let you know. Those of you here at the circuit, thank you for your patience. The worst of the weather seems to have passed by, he says with, again, his usual boyish enthusiasm and hopeful heart. But I can see some uh, blue sky just off to the north and east. There's another bank of cloud coming, but it looks nowhere near as threat threatening, Jeremy, as what we saw earlier. No, and around to the west, it's a lot clearer, too, than it, than it was. It just got this little sort of pocket here, sort of northwest, that looks uh, as if there's still some rain back over there. Uh, Hopefully that won't come back toward this way. Being told by our link to race control that we'll get drive times uh, as soon as we get to uh, a situation where the cars will be uh, getting back on the track. Obviously no point in trying to do those calculations before the cars get out there. We'd be speculating and just confusing ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yes, because it'll depend. Yeah, I mean, the, the the drivers have been at the wheel of the cars now for for well over enough time Correct. to be able to qualify. But uh, how much was it, there was? It was better. What, was it thirty odd minutes before we went to to red? It 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 was. Yeah, it was just it was just on half an hour before yeah. we went. Uh, they they to only have to do forty five. So, I I would imagine you know, you're going to be good now to go if you if you make the change now. That, that would probably be good enough, I would uh, I would imagine. But again, that's got to be confirmed 
by race control. And we've got a full course yellow now rather than a red flag, which means that any second now I expect to see this line of cars ahead of me actually rolling out of the pit lane. Uh, what I haven't seen is where the... I can't see far enough around the corner to see the safety car moving on. Engines, I believe, are still running. Confirmed. And Shea Adam is at pit out. Shea, is this safety car looking like it's going to roll any time shortly? Uh, well, the parking brake has been removed. The car has been put into gear. It is just waiting. The 54 was actually more towards pit out than the yes. safety car. So it was just released. Michael Johnson is now making his way around the track. Correct. Safety car is waiting for it to come back and catch up before it starts to leave. The, 50, the 54 will get a minute and then the safety car will roll. Yes. And uh, safety car is sitting there waiting for the command to be given. But we do have all the engines fired. And I'll leave my mic open so you can listen to the cars when they do start to roll back off. And, and Shay, where is, is the 83 car down there as well? The 83 car. Next over European Cayman. Um, I can't see it, but maybe Jim can. Oh, here we go. Because okay, I thought that was back on the tail end of the as well. down at the very tail end of the line, guys, the 83 car. Well, isn't that a great noise to hear? It's still wet on the pit lane and very slick indeed, because even just dropping the clutch very carefully, there's plenty of wheel spin from the cars as they're going past us in our broadcast suite. We're trackside at VIR with just under an hour and four minutes to run. And the 83 Porsche is the third to last car in the line, I've been told, as they come past us now. Now, a lot of these cars are crossing the start-finish line in pit lane, of course. So we've now got 12 laps completed. Struggling Mini coming towards me now, which I think might be going behind the wall. Yes, it's got damage to the uh, steering, the right front. And of course, that's not been able to be touched in the Park Fermi conditions. And there's quite a lot of damage on that mini is that the 37 jeremy can you see that as he comes around yes it is the 37 and he's managed to get it out of the pit lane uh, so that will cause no further strife for anybody the cars are out on the circuit 37 had austin mack at the wheel he'd been doing really well keeping that car on the circuit but ultimately had to give best to the conditions so here's how they've gone through the first timing line out on the circuit. Paul Halton leads in the 76, the Compass 360, Shelby 350R. Then it's Danny Paquette in the 33 from Scott Maxwell and Chad Gilzinger. So we've lost for a moment there. Uh, we've lost for a moment as... Michael Johnson goes through to come round and catch up the end of the line. We've lost for a moment, which I don't understand, Jeremy. The 99, the 99 car. car. No, it's been scored in 18th position at the moment, that car. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh... It went round twice more than it should have under raid. Well, maybe it's been Dr. Lap because of that then. Um, or put to the back of the pack or something. Michael Johnson is in 19th. He did go off just before we went to red flag. And Burkett was in second just before we went to red flag. But I didn't see... I, I thought he was down in uh, third position behind Burkett. I thought he had regained third position. But clearly, uh, I was wrong there. 
Um, let's have a quick update from the pit lane. Shay, give us uh, the weather update, please. Weather update is it's getting very humid again. That uh, big impending doom cloud that is back out by turn one looks reminiscent of about an hour before the race. So we might make it to the end or we might get rain right at the end, but uh, temperatures already starting to climb back up. It was nice and I'm not even gonna say cool, but cooler for a few minutes. Now it's starting to get warm again. As soon as that sun comes out completely, it's gonna get really sticky down here, very humid. The surface in the pits is very slippery. You could actually kind of skate along on your feet. You don't even have to pick your feet up. That's how slippery it is. And that's normally kind of hard to do on asphalt. Uh, question. Um, the, it, Jim, you ought to put yourself in the mindset of a, of a, a team manager at the moment. So imagine you're Joe Bradley in the pit lane. Do you risk staying on your slick tyres, particularly if you're the, at the front of the field, um, or do you go to wet? Now, the decision might be taken away from you depending on when you've got a pit for your driver, of course. Exactly, but also I would be willing to bet that there are just feverish conversations going on right now between the drivers that are in the cars and the crew chiefs. What are the conditions like? I know you're only going slowly, but is it going to be clear enough for slicks? Uh, you may see some people actually gamble. The guys that have got to make the driver change uh, are the ones that. You well, know. everybody's got to make a driver change. Nobody's well, doing that changes that's, that's yet. That's true. So. That's right. Nobody has made their changes yet. The 15 took on some fuel when they stopped. Correct. So, so did the 33. Yeah. So so they uh, they could go a little bit longer before they have to make their decision. They may stay out for a little bit until they do get to a point where they have to get the second driver in and then go ahead and do their pit stop and then they'll they'll know. But anybody that has to make the decision right now, it's it's a roll of the dice unless the driver that's out there, you know, Paul Holton could stay out there. If Pierre Kleinuming thinks he could stay out there on slicks, no reason to change. I think it's gonna be up to the co driver as well. Actually, you've made a very good point there because Danny Burkett and Scott Maxwell at the front of the field had a splash. We we're already under an hour to go. They presumably would have refilled. They might not need fuel to go to the end from here so they can stretch another 15 minutes before they have to put their second driver in. And that means they've got 15 minutes to assess the conditions. Anyone who is on slicks now and thinks they've got to go to the wets, then they may have to change again if it dries up. But if you're on wets now, you could take a gamble in 15 minutes time and go to slicks. So there is a slight advantage to the guys who've already been down pit lane. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's a significant advantage to, to those guys who've been down pit lane because if you do opt to stay out, the track is going to dry out pretty quickly, I think. If there's no more rain. Well, there's, there's already dry a drying Indeed. line at yeah. these speeds with barely a third of the field on wet weather tyres. Indeed. Uh, and I, honestly, I, I think by the end of the race, if you're on wet weather tyres, you might be struggling to run an hour on a set of wets now. Oh, I don't think there's any way you could run an, uh, an hour on a set of wets because I think it's going to be dry out. I think it's probably going to be dried in at least that, on the racing line in, in 15 minutes or so, probably. That may be the thing that makes the decision for these guys. If they right. can't run an hour, then they're just going to tell the driver that comes in and changes the new driver. You're going to have to tough it out. Yes, exactly. Uh, Right, through go the cars at the back of the field past us. Yeah, these are the guys that have been... They, these, these are the, are the cars, wave-by cars. Yeah, that were trapped between the uh, safety car and the uh, class leaders. Those are all ST cars that are making their way now th down towards turn one uh, and at the back of the field. So we're now going to have a total, I think, of uh, 27 cars on the, the same lap as the overall leader. Um, and all bar what, seven of those are ST cards. I just asked Brett Mosing, what are you guys going to do? You're going to change to slicks or wets? And he said, we're still trying to decide. And I said, well, what do you want? And he says, well, I want wets. That sound that you heard is the 76, 33, and 15 into the pits, boys. 
Yeah. East 76 comes to a stop, and Pierre Kleinebing gingerly runs around the back of the car. They've already begun the fueling and the tire change. Uh, Paul Holton getting out, and uh, Pierre strapped in just one box ahead of them in the number 15. Scott Maxwell is already out of that Ford Shelby, and Billy Johnson has been installed. They are doing no tires on the 15. They are doing tires on the 76. So the 15 has had a little bit of fuel and a driver change. 76, full service. 33 is, is also in, and Mark Miller has gotten into Darth Cayman. They are more concerned about cleaning out the grill than they are changing the tires on that car. No change there. The other end of the pit lane, the 46 is in. Guy Cosmo's taking over that car. They've put wet Continentals on that car. The 99 and the 09 are in. The uh, 09 is getting its radiator cleaned and rain tires put on, as is the case with the 99. So at this, uh, at the decision so far, with all the GS runners, go to go to wets. Thank you, Jim. A minimum drive time now, 29 minutes maximum. 68 minutes for the run to the flag. So with 54 minutes to go, 55 minutes to go, pretty much everybody's going to come in. They are going to come in there, and they're going to be good to go because there's less than 54 minutes to go. They've already done their their minimum time, so uh, all will be good now. So all everybody who's in the pits now will be making driver changes. Uh, hearing from uh, race control. The 99 didn't come in when they went red, did an extra lap. And now whether that's a penalty for that car or whether the timing and scoring picked him up and put him back further up the field than he should have been, I don't understand that at the moment. I'll uh, I'll try and get that try and get that uh, clarified. But the 99 is going out now, and Sebastian Landy. Uh, will have brought that car in and handed it over as the rest of the field goes through. So 53 minutes, 54 minutes to go, and it looks like we'll be going back to green flag racing shortly here. The pace car is continuing to circulate. Aren't you glad you stayed around? Uh, there's a driver in front of us at the 360 pit. And that is going to be a driver change next time around. A very damp Brian Till, one of our colleagues from TV at Fox, is uh, looking down towards the pit stop area. There's a degree of oil as well that's come out from underneath that mini which is sitting all the way down the pit lane uh, ST cars to come in this time around I yep. think I saw one of the rebel rock racing cars in last time around actually thought I saw the seven car in which would have been in out of order uh, as the leader is in. Let's start with Jim Roller for this uh, cycle of pit stops. It's going to be an all skate, John. All of the ST competitors are coming to the pit lane. 93 and 92 have hit their marks. Chad Gilsinger is helping Ryan Eversley to uh, saddle up. The 92 car is uh, going through a driver change as well. 44 car is in, and there is damage to the 44 car. Looks like Sarah Catania might have had uh, a little bit of damage. The uh, went off under yellow, and the, the hood of the car is a little deranged, but other than that, the car looks fine. In comes Michael Johnson as well. At this end of the pit lane, again, it looks like it's going to be rain tires for everybody. Shay? Down here with the Freedom Autosport pit stop. The 25 had a little bit of issue because they are on a downhill slope. The car just gently rolling down away as the fueler was trying to get the fuel load in completely. They have done a driver change in the 25 Mazda. Stephen McAleer did a rain dance earlier on. He got what he wanted. We're still waiting for the championship leaders, the 17 to come in and Nick Gallant to get out, handing over to Spencer Pompelli. 
And the 92 car now had to wait in line for the 93 to finish his pit stop. Only one pit crew, as uh, we've talked many times, this Hart Racing team uh, from Marysville. These are engineers who, this is a hobby for them. This is what they do for fun. They come out here and race. And so there's only one pit crew. So the team has to uh, wait much uh, Formula One style. When, uh, when the team comes in, the guy that's in second place has to wait. The uh, driver change is done on the 92 car. Wet tires going on all the way around. Standard pit stop for these guys. Continental Tire pit lane reports from Jim Ruler and Shea out of the 92 Honda then going out. Shea, anything more at your end? Yeah, we've got uh, Nick Gallant finally making his way in and uh, it will be Spencer Pompelli in the 17 and Andy Lally in the 18. Ryan Eversley got in the 93, so Team ATL are in those three cars. We're going to have to keep an eye on, but for now, it is the 17 Porsche that I'm watching. They are doing a tire change on that car from wets to wets again as everyone up and down the pit lane has been putting on wets down at my end, Jim. Has everyone been doing that down at yours? Yes, they have, Shay. And a very quick pit stop for the number 34, Alara uh, Mazda MX-5. Not sure they even changed tires on that car. That was a lightning quick stop. I'm going to have to check with the team. A great deal of confusion down here from the Rebel Rock Racing Team. The 7, which came in with the GS cars, just made its way back down. Of course, the 8, its sister car, was already in the pit box. It didn't know where to go, looked to come in through the pit box, decided it couldn't, and went back out. That uh, was a lot of confusion for the team, but Rebel Rock Racing, which changed ownership in the offseason, they decided to start over from scratch before this race, and on Wednesday, they got rid of half their fruit starting over again, trying to find their way to the podium. And as far as the Lara Racing was concerned, Jim Roller telling me they did change all four Continental tyres. They were just really quick at getting that Mazda MX-5 turned around. So watch for those guys. Well, I'm uh, not sure they were, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I think they might have uh, lost a fair bit of ground. OK. Because they came in in the... Uh, one, two, three, fourth position in the class, and I think they've gone out quite a bit farther back down than that. OK. Uh, it's 49 minutes to go, and we are still behind the M6 safety car. I tell you what, though, Jeremy, this is drying out very, very quickly. Very, very quickly indeed. We, there's no doubt in my mind, as Cameron Castles has just... Or, the 12 car, should I say, has just come back in. Did they try and get no, back? No, they on didn't the, come, they in didn't come the, in. They didn't ah, come in. They didn't come in last time for Right, something. so they were get, trying to get a lap back, were they? No, no, they were on the lead lap, okay. Right, very odd. Jim Roller. Trent Hinman has gotten in the car. Cameron Castles got out. They did not change tires on that car. Okay. Okay, yeah, they didn't change tires, okay. Well, that, car's, that car is That's already on, on wet. On wet, correct. they came in before the red flag. Maybe they just wanted to come in down pit lane when pit lane was quieter uh, to do their, their driver change. They've not really lost a, uh, a position. No, well, I'm, I'm assuming that we're going to reset the field so the GS cars will be at the front ahead of all the ST cars before we go back. Having said that, the number 12 car uh, came in off sequence with the other GS cars, Correct. so that might not be the case. So if, if, if that is the way it, work, it transpires, then Trent Hinman's got an, awful, got an awful lot of work to do because he isn't going to be able to move past the other ST cars. The Alara racing machine now right in behind Cameron Lawrence in the 92 Honda, and they are scored in 10th and 11th positions. So there's been a bit of a shake-up there in the ST field. Uh, and scored at the moment as leading the ST field is Stephen McAleer, yes. who was one of the first cars to stop, was he not? Y so did, they uh, didn't need tyres. Correct. They, they just... Uh, and, and they wouldn't have needed fuel either, I don't think, so they probably just changed the drivers and sent him on his way. Same with number 56 car, but that actually lost a fair bit of ground uh, on, the, on the other contenders in ST. So Eric Foss now behind the wheel of the 56 car. They've dropped down to sixth position. But it was a great stop there by your body motion racing in car number 31 uh, to, get the, to get that car out to, into the second place now 
in SC. That's Devin Jones taking over from uh, Jason Rowe, who did a brilliant job in the first stint of the race. Third time's a charm for Rebel Rock Racing. The seven car is in again, Shea. He couldn't actually see out the windshield. It was fogging so much that ah. uh, the visibility was bad, and two mechanics just jumped over the wall and cleaned it out inside out for him. I actually, on that uh, note, I saw Stephen McAleer when he was getting ready to jump into the 25 Freedom Autosport Mazda. He had a squeegee on a stick with him, so yeah. he would be doing his own work. And I think we've gone back to green there, Jeremy. As the cars have come through this time, rather catching me out, the, we have got racing going past us and we are under green flag conditions again with the M6 in the pit lane. So the field wasn't reset and immediately the 33 goes by the 15 and that's Mark Miller past Billy Johnson for the lead. On the restart, going through to the left hook now, Billy Johnson caught perhaps a little napping there and Mark Miller now has to strike for home, sliding around in the 33. One capital came and the C.J. Wilson, the dark rear car, trying to get some distance between himself and the Shelby as they head under the Michelin crossover bridge and towards the uphill S's, the climbing S's. And Mark Miller, there's already a drying line. It's not dry, but it's a completely different shade to the wet of side of the circuit and Billy Johnson tries to go down and use that wet line with the wet continental tyres that they both have on. I'm going to predict that in three or four laps, these guys will be looking for the wet patches. Mark Willard goes wide into Oak Tree, trying to look for a bit of grip offline, finds it, punches out to the second part of Oak Tree, pulls one, two, three cars length from the 15 as Billy Johnson tried to go up the inside there, but there just wasn't the grip. And Mark Miller then has been able to break the tour as off onto the grass. That is the Porsche Cayman number 19, I think. The Connor Bloom and Greg Strelsoff car. He'll get back onto the track now, round the twisties at the end of the lap, through the roller coaster and heading downhill. This is going to be tiptoeing stuff for the first couple of laps. And Mark Miller struck early to get the lead for CJ Wilson. Billy Johnson doesn't have to race him. He's got the championship lead and he will go away from here with the championship lead, even if these positions stay as they are now. To my left, wait for the cars to come through. There they are, there's less than a car's length between them. Down through the kink in the front straight. Mark Miller right in the middle of the road, breaks as late as he dares. He's taking a slightly defensive line that's gonna take him away from the apex in the horseshoe. And Billy Johnson is right there. It's Pierre Kleinerbing, by the way, in third position in the 76 car. Guy Cosmo in fourth in the 46 TGM Porsche. Wind picking up and blowing again, straight down the start, finish straight. This is how the last splash started in st stephen mcleer from ryan eversley by a tenth of a second then brick casey jr in the master number 27 is another second behind they're having a cracking battle but at the head of the field billy johnson goes completely sideways and almost takes out the leader that was in turn five he's got a decent run though even though the car was sideways we know billy likes to drift the car now this it's going to have to be sensible driving from both here. The normal racing line is not where the lead is going to be necessarily, and race control will have to keep an eye on this here. Down into the uh, hairpin. And once again, Mark Miller punches out in that little... Cayman slightly better it's getting drier Jim Roller I'm really surprised these guys have gone to wet weather tires with the track drying up so quickly uh, I was too John and I've talked to three or four of these teams asking them a specific question can your rain tires make it all the way to the end and they all to a person said they think it's going to rain again in a half an hour they said they may regret that decision but if you look, you can't see it because it's right directly behind you. We've got those really black clouds again. The wind has picked up. It is now starting to blow in the direction that should bring that weather this way, if indeed it is going to come this way. So they may be right. They, everybody has been making their decision based on the weather radar. 
Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Jim Roller. Well, that's... Yeah, sometimes it's better to just stick your hand outside the awning and see if it's raining or not. If, the, if, you, if your head's getting wet, it's raining. Uh, in the ST category, it is still... The, uh, in fact, no, Ryan Eversley has gone to the lead. Ryan Eversley to the lead in the Honda number 93 has got ahead of Stephen McAleer. Yeah? And Trent Hindman coming back through that battle as well. Now, that must have just happened last time around because the 26 now, uh, the uh, 25 car rather, has got Britt Casey Jr. behind him rather than the number 93 Honda that it had. So it's all changed at the front of ST. Meantime, the 26 car further down the, the field, Andrew Carbonell has got Cherry Borchella for company in the 43 Master. They're battling for 15th and 16th position. The leaders are starting to catch traffic and this could get nasty very, very quickly. The seven Rebel Rock racing car in again to the pit lane. Yeah, the number 84 car came into pit lane last time. I think that must have been a drive-through penalty for the number 84, the BIM World BMW, Tyler Cook. Yeah, I think they were one of the cars that went round after the red flag, weren't they? Yeah, you might be right. So now, not only does Mark Miller have to worry about the Mustang behind him, but he's also got to think about the traffic that he's going to come into contact with shortly, or at least into proximity with. Let's hope it's not contact. He drives onto the wet side of the track as he goes past the number 18 Porsche. Which is Andy Lally. Andy Lally and Phil running. Blue. And that car's been off the circuit. That was the red and white uh, Porsche that was off the circuit. Uh, and Jim Roller has some sad news for the 44. I've cursed them, didn't I? I've built them up so much this weekend, and Sarah in particular. Yeah, unfortunately, overheating. Uh, the heat soak of sitting, the uh, off-track excursion, everything else is combined. They are now pushing the number 44 up pit road. They are, uh, they are out for the day, and it was a really sad tableau, John, as I walked up. The, the crew guys were making the decision that it was going to be, uh, it was all over and there was nothing they could do, and they closed the bonnet of the car, and when they did, the Nissan badge on the front of the car fell off, and the two guys just looked at each other and shook their heads, and one of them bent down and picked it up, and that's the end of the day. Well, you notice that the seven had made its way back in 60 seconds in the naughty box for coming in with the GS cars. So the uh, seven definitely will not be uh, winning the race today. Thank you, Cher. And Jim, when it's not your day, it's really not your day. The bonnet badge even falling mm -hmm. off that 44 car. The fastest car in the ST class that, that time around was the number 73 Mini, which is uh, has Mark uh, which, which Pombo is that? It is Mark, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Mark Pombo is the number 73 car then. Uh, no, it's not, it's no, Matt. It's Matt. <laughs> I thought so, yeah. Uh, who is, uh, who's on the tail of another couple of cars. who got Brick Casey Jr. right ahead of him. And that car is charging right now. Matt has a huge amount of experience. He knows to drive, how to drive these cars. And uh, all, the whole mini team, they were doing a rain dance last night in addition to... to uh, ravaging the road cars to get the fuel fuel pumps ready. Uh, Devin Jones has just got ahead of Brick Casey Jr. So he's now on the back bumper of Stephen McAleer. The 44, I do borrow Nissan being pushed away. It's uh, person power, not Nissan power, that's getting that car in behind the wall at the moment. What a very, very sad day for them. Mark Miller has pulled out a full one second lead <laughs> at the head of the field. From Billy Johnson in second, the 33, dark grey Cayman from the 15, white Mustang Shelby. Charles Putnam's gone up into third position. He got by Pierre Kleiner being last time around. Got a great run on him on the start-finish line and made the pass going into turn one. Guy Cosmo that, now up in the fifth position for TGM. Uh, that should be Charles Espinlove, I think, now at the wheel of the 09 car. You may well be right. Uh, it doesn't, although it doesn't show it on the, uh, on the score, I must admit. But, uh, yeah, that car is absolutely flying. It doesn't have to... Oh, yes, it does. Uh, 68 minutes max, wasn't it? So, yeah. So... Oh, Mark Miller getting alongside the 65 BMW and the 65 just understeering off right alongside the leader of the track. Uh, was that Brent or Tim Probert at the wheel of the 65 car? Not up among the leaders at the moment not having a great day. 
And in fact, it was Brett Morsing at the wheel. But Mark Miller, having got the lead, has now started to just pull away. Billy Johnson, intent in enjoying himself, is kicking the 15 car sideways at every available opportunity. There's a much lighter line on the racing line and around the racing line with 36 minutes still to go. This is going to be a very interesting last 15 or 20 minutes, I reckon. In street tuner, Ryan Eversley with the front wheel drive Honda has got ahead of Stephen McAlee and so is Eric Voss now. So the Porsche has gone up into second, 93, 56 and 25. That's a great fight back from Voss. Uh, they were one of the first teams to pit for wet tyres, but on the restart, they dropped a long way down on the uh, pit stop, rather, they, to change the drivers, they dropped a long way down. But already making their way back up to second place and trying to chase down Ryan Eversley. Yeah, they were probably fifth when they took the restart uh, in ST, but now, as you say, now up into second base. But Ryan Eversley, a great lap there. One eight, a two minutes, 18.5. That's the second quicker than most of the contenders in the ST class. Mark Miller, so, two eleven six last time around. He is really enjoying these conditions. Pierre Kleinerby not able to match the lap ties. Trent Hinmans is the guy who's most likely at the moment because next time around he's going to pass Pierre Kleinerby and he'll be in the third position. And at the moment he's lapping faster than Billy Johnson. So Mark Miller and the... CJ Wilson Racing Team might well be cheering on the number 12 body motion racing Porsche at the moment because if Trent can get by Pierre Kleinerby, he's got maybe an opportunity in the next half an hour, 35 minutes to jump across. It's about 15 seconds to Billy Johnson and put some pressure on second place. And the, uh, the Aston Martin, the 09 Aston Martin, uh, lost ground on that lap. There goes the Mini again, move, moving up ground, making up one more position there. Uh, past the number 25 car. So Stephen McAleer uh, from Scotland is struggling a little bit in these conditions. And the little Mazda has been past... Took the restart in the lead. Yep. Yes, indeed. And he's now fallen back to, what, to fifth position. Lost two places on that last lap, both to the Mini and to the number 31 Cayman with uh, Derek... Uh, Devon Jones at the wheel. Billy Johnson at the southern end of the circuit goes around the right-hander that is the Oak Tree turn. But he's dropping away, and he's dropping away significantly. Two and a half seconds now, and a full second taken last time around by Mark Miller. Mark Miller, though, already beginning to look for the damper patches on the circuit, Jeremy, and I, I thought this was going to happen. There's 33 yeah. minutes to go here. Yeah. And unless this rains again, we are going to have a slippery but dry-ish line on the circuit. I'm sure it's going to be greasy, but I don't think it's anywhere near wet enough to keep the full wet tyres cool enough. And what happens is the tyres will... The Continental tyre, wet weather tyres are very good indeed. And, and also, I noticed, by the way, Eversley now, all the way down, driver's left, down Madison Avenue. He's not drifting over to the racing line at all. What happens with racing tyres is the blocks of rubber start moving around. They overheat and become detached, and you get what's called chunking. Pieces of the rubber surface will start to come off because the tyres are taken out of their operating temperature range. Normally speaking, wet weather tyres are supposed to be working in the rain or wet conditions, which would normally mean that the track surface and the ambient temperature was pretty cold. When it's partially drying up like this and there's a high ambient and a warm track, which clearly there is here, they are going to get out of that happy place very, very quickly indeed. Gilsinger looking, excuse me, Eversley, looking for the damp spot on the start line as well. Mark Miller now by three seconds, and Billy Johnson is easing his pace. Mark Miller is going quicker. 
and a half now for Mark Miller. He's opened up almost five seconds of a lead. The battle in ST has Ryan Eversley by just four seconds now from Eric Voss in second and yeah, who closed Matt Pompo in, in third. Excuse me, John, who closed in on that last lap, the second place car, Eric Voss, by about seven tenths of a second over Ryan Eversley. So uh, that's going to be certainly one to watch. Whoops, there's somebody off the road as well. It's the 99, I think. Uh, the car was shut off, the 76 car as it went through. No, it was the 99 car that was shut down as it went uh, across the line. That's the automatic racing car, the Rob Eckling invisible glass machine. Now, where has that car come to a halt? As Trent Hinman has got Pierre Kleinerbing, as I suggested he might, he's got 17 and a half seconds to catch Billy Johnson. But he's not, he wasn't quicker that time around. Johnson in the 2.12s, Hinman that time around in the 2.14s, but he did have to pass Kleinerby. Ooh, we've got a grandstand finish here, Jeremy, haven't we? We have, we've got a... It's just heating up nicely. Yeah, what a great job Mark Miller is doing here at the front of the field. He's uh, extending that lead here, making it look easy. He really is. Another 11-3 last time around. He yeah. was in the 10s the lap before, and all of a sudden it's over five seconds. Now traffic will play its part, but he'll want to bank up as much time as he can. But then there's going to be a point when someone gets on the radio to him and says, right, now watch your tyres. You've got the gap now. You don't need to push. Let's watch the tyres. Now please tell me they've got enough fuel in that car. Please tell me it can get to the end. Hasn't always been the case in these races. In ST, Ryan Eversley then by 4.6 seconds. Lost about half a second last time around to Eric Voss. How does he do this time? He's picked up his pace, a 2.16.6 against a 17.2. So he takes back the half a second and a little bit of interest. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, these front wheel drive cars, the Mini and the Honda, I think they're going to have to be very careful towards the end of this race. You might just want to put a bit of money on Eric Voss at the moment in the 56 car for ST. Stephen McAleer yeah, he off the he, pace he, again. He, he, on that last lap, he actually lost ground yeah, he did. to Ryan Eversley. Uh, Ryan Eversley there turned uh, the best lap in that class. Matt Pombo in the 73 Mini. That's the one with the black roof. Trailing a little bit of uh, the under engine cover on the ground. And that was caused just a few moments ago, I think, by going a bit wild. There's the pass for third in ST as the 83 has gone through. Beautiful bit of driving by all concerned, actually. As the position change at the York Tree. That is, well, that's interesting. That is the 83 car, and I'm not seeing the 83 car on the timing and scoring, Jeremy. Uh, it's a couple of laps down. All right, OK. Gotcha. Well, so that, yeah, a couple of laps down to the overall leader. Down in uh, 20th position. So that car just uh, making its way back through and being followed by the 73 Mini. As Matt Pombo is using him, if you like, as a bit of a snowplow. So the Mini up into third. The blue and black Porsche were ahead of it, not in the fight. No, and uh, Pombo's having a hard time getting around it. That's his, that's his difficulty right now. Mm. That was his lap time last time around, a 17-3. Well, there's more and more drivers, Jeremy, looking for the damp patches on the track, whether it's two or four wheels. They're trying to get a little bit of wet under their wheels. Starting to sprinkle, and it's worse than that. I can see real rain on pit lane. Shea Adams going for the hood option on the IMSA jacket. That's, uh, that is the, uh, that's the sign for me that... Uh, so Jeff Mosing and those who gambled may have been right. Is it, raising, is it raining enough now to get the track back to a damp enough condition that will 
see these wet weather tyres through to the end of the race from what 50 odd minutes Mark Miller has the intermittent wipes on on the lead car his, his lead is five seconds still but that was the first lap that Billy Johnson took time back from him but Trent Hinman did a 2.09.0 against yeah. the 10.5 and an 11.3. Yeah, he's been pulling him in about a second and a half the last three laps around. But now the rain's coming down again, so who's looked after their tyres the best? Yes, because that's the other point of it. Jeremy, uh, you're absolutely right. Um, if you've worn your wet weather tyres down too much, if it does get very wet, then they're not going to work, are they? They don't move the water. Yeah. So there's another variable. Billy Johnson then in second position in the 15, the white and green. Another second and a half for, for Trent Hinman there, he closer, closer to the second place car of uh, Billy Johnson. And uh, Pierre Klein, you being uh, falling back by uh, well a margin of greater than that, 9-4 last time around for Trent Hinman. A full second quicker than, uh, than, than the race leader. Ryan Eversley has responded to very nicely the challenge from Eric Voss and Matt Pombo behind him just picked up his pace enough just to three quarters of a second or so 16-4 last time around it's going to make it a little more difficult for the guys to take large chunks of time out of that lead so Honda number 93 leads ST from the 56 bright orange Porsche in second and another six seconds further back is the 73 that's the dark red mini with the black roof They're st still stuck behind that number 83 Porsche Cayman. Yes. And an 18 3 last time around for that Cayman. That's not what. It needs to get out of the way now, really, doesn't it? They'll be getting blue flags. But uh, I'm sure that the team will be having a talking to. Well, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's Gregory Lee Fugger, I presume, the wheel of It is, car. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, he's quick, so. Uh, it, it isn't for position as long as he's not holding up the mini overtly then he'll be able to say where he is yeah weather closing in again on the far side of the circuit jeremy and once again we can hear the pitter pat of rain on the effects mics thanks very much to our camera operators and all of our technicians for giving us the pictures here not only here in the booth but around the world as the IMSA broadcast is perfectly synced in sound and vision. The 99's bad day has just got worse. There's more damage on that car than I remember. And it's right in front of the 92 Honda exit of turn number four, the left hook. It's another grassy moment there. Meantime. The lead is at four and a half seconds, and Mark Miller's just holding it there, not trying to do anything silly. But Billy Johnson is going to see shortly Trent Hinman closing in on him. Well, actually, that time he took a second out yeah, of him. Yeah, he did. Yeah. But I've got a feeling Trent Hinman's just hit that big lump of traffic that the other guys have just worked their way through, Jeremy. And that might be part of the issue. Mark Miller is in free air again as he is on his way up towards turn number 10. I love this circuit. Absolutely love it. Through 10, up to the oak tree turn. And it's going to be a very nervous 22 and a half minutes down at CJ Wilson Racing. They'll be disappointed they haven't taken more points out of the championship leaders. But they want the wins at the end of this championship season. 5.2 seconds the lead now. 14 and a half seconds back to Trent Hinman from Billy Johnson. He's just closed in a tad more, so 4.7 now the lead as they come through the second checkpoint. In ST, Honda 93, Porsche 56. Mini 73. One of those guys within about 11 seconds. Yeah, and uh, and the gaps remain fairly constant there. And Gregory Liefuger in that, in that uh, lap car, twice lap car, I think it is, number 83. He's, he certainly didn't, didn't appear to be holding up number 73 car the last couple of laps. So, no, indeed, he's pulled away a little bit now. 
So uh, Pombo now in, in third place um, and uh, without any hindrance ahead of him. So Matt Pombo trying to close down on Eric Voss. Eric Voss trying to close down on Ryan Eversley. In GS, sixth position, Guy Cosmo is 17 seconds behind Pierre Kleinerby, who is barely half a second behind Charlie Putman, who's gone up into fourth position. Indeed, he's uh, overtaken uh, Pierre Kleinerby on that away. last lap. Yeah, and pulling away to 1.3 seconds. 15 seconds further up the road from Putman in the 0-9 Aston is Trent Hinman in the number 12 Porsche. And he's got 14 seconds to make up on Billy Johnson, who has five seconds of a gap between himself and Mark Miller. 33, 15, 12, 0, 9, 76 and 46, your GS top six. 20 and a half minutes to go. Screaming sound of a Mazda. Spencer Pumpelli and Andrew Carbonell battling for 14th and 15th position. Terry Porcello. Next back down the road, but some 10 seconds further away. And that is for 14th and 15th in class, the 17 and 26 cars. Red and white Porsche, green and white Mazda. Spencer Pumpelli came into this weekend leading the championship with Nick Galante in the RS1. Porsche Cayman, that is going to hurt them. We'll have to get the abacus out at the end of this, and Jeremy will be doing a bit of mental arithmetic, trying to work out what the ST battles have given us today. But I think it's have closed up even further. It was pretty tight. Meantime, ah, now we've got a real battle between the 73 Mini and the 36 of Corey Lewis in the Porsche. Now, Corey's a lap down and should be giving way to this car, trying to fight its way through. He's fighting rather hard. Let's hope this doesn't end badly. No, the Mini's through. So the 73 car goes past the 18th position. Uh, the 17th position, 36. The strategic wealth racing Porsche Cayman. Meantime, BMW number 65 gets uh, a lap put on it by Mini number 52. It's the, one of the JCW teams. I think that was for position. Uh, there are a couple of laps down. Yeah. So, Mark Miller by six seconds now. It's regained the gap that he had earlier, but he's in traffic and he's got to be careful now. Puts a lap on the another lap on the 99 of Rob Eklund as you've got a mini rally crossing here it's Lydon Hill in the 1980s and it is the 52 car we were just talking about he comes out right into a gaggle of cars including the leader Jeremy and those two those minis yes indeed those two minis running a slightly different livery this weekend you notice the green stripes over the top of the car uh, and the uh, the BC stickers uh, on the on the side that's in memory of uh, Brian Clawson and uh, what is the connection between Mini and Brian Clawson? Well, the uh, uh, team principal at Mini JCW is Lewis Pericarpi, who was Brian Clawson's crew chief at Indianapolis this past May. There's a change also for one, two, three, fourth position in ST. Number 19, Connor Bloom has been really moving up nicely. That's another of the RS1 uh, Porsche Caymans and uh, by far the best place of the RS1 Porsche mm. Caymans because Spencer Papelli really is making no ground way down the order in 14th place but Connor Bloom is the opposite he's charging along he's made up one two three positions in the last four four laps or so and now up into fourth place in ST Problem he's quite a way back behind Mark Pombo Problem that Spencer pompelli has got Jeremy is the next car that he would have to pass to make him a position in class is the Chris Wright Racing Black number 22 Porsche, and it's nearly half a minute up the road. So Andy Lee behind the wheel at the moment, and he's he is making progress. He's got Andrew Carbonell hanging onto his back bumper at the moment in the Mazda number 26. But he's not able to a break that tour. B, I wouldn't have thought eat in enough to that uh, 30 second. If he can get back that 
towards the back of Lee in the next 16 minutes. There's a few a gaggle of cars that he might be able to make up in two or three positions. 56, Eric Voss, easily spotted, even in the gloom, that bright orange machine. Trying to chase down Ryan Eversley in the dark grey Honda. That gap has gone out a little bit once the rain came back. 8.8 .8 seconds, 9.5 seconds now. And it was down under five seconds at one stage. The battle for the leads still has five and a half, 5.7 seconds between Mark Miller in the 33 dark grey Cayman and the 15 white and green Mustang Shelby, a Shelby Mustang. Very impressed with Mark Miller from the restart. Jeremy realised what he had to do, got into the lead, built himself up a second, a couple of seconds, and controlled it, eased it out to six seconds. Sort of just holding it there now, 15 and a half minutes to go. Got to convert this one now. And Trent Hinman has brought the gap down from 16 seconds to Billy Johnson, down to eight seconds. And he took two and a bit of that the last lap around. Shea Adam, what have you got? I just went in to check on the CJ Wilson racing guys and took, caught up with Danny Burkett. Said, you a little bit nervous right now? And his answer was extremely as he was twisting the coil, one of your big pet peeves, John, from his headphones around his finger over and over again. And the poor thing looks like it's about to uh, snap right off. So Danny Burkett is just sitting there watching Mark Miller. But I think uh, he won't be breathing for the next 15 minutes. Here. Oh, a spin for the 27 Mazda. Yeah. What a shame. It was running in the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh position, having a really good battle with his teammate there, Stephen McAleer. It's Britt Casey Jr., who's drifting that car now. Clearly, there's, uh, those tyres are you know, pretty worn now, wet weather tyres, and it's sliding around. It caught out Britt Casey Jr. Had a quick spin. I don't think he, he might he might have uh, been able to resume without losing a position. I think he has, actually. He had uh, about 13 seconds on Cameron Lawrence in the 92 Honda. That'll, that's been cut by about 10 seconds or so. But I think, yeah, there's Cameron Lawrence just in the background behind the leader. So, yeah, he's, he's held on to that position, Jeremy. You're absolutely right. Mark Miller is in that little battle now. I mean, this is, this is the worry for his team. Mark Miller driving beautifully. Yeah. Somebody else spins off in front. 13 and a half seconds. And 13 and a half minutes remaining in the race as well, coincidentally. Yeah. Here comes Ryan Eversley. He's also doing a fabulous job. And at number 93, Honda heading off towards turn one with a pretty substantial lead. We're still waiting for the second place car. Here he comes now is uh, Eric Foss, he's got Greg Liefuga right all over him. Which means the Mini can't be that far behind, Not because far. he's been following him almost uh, in his wheel track. He's certainly closing, but he's still got about three seconds to make up. So, Spencer Pompelli has lost a position to Andrew Carbonell, and how important is that going to be in the championship, Jeremy? Got Stephen Simpson ahead of them, 13th, 14th, and 15th in ST, the bright yellow BMW, then the green and white Mazda, which is so small it's hidden even behind the BMW, then the red and multicolored Porsche. That is 13th, 14th, and 15th in ST. And despite making the pass, Andrew Carbonell can't hold on to it down Madison Avenue because. The Porsche just drives past, and the BMW of Stephen Simpson is just driving away from the pair of them. I think that's Terry Borchella, who... No, he's a bit further back. It's the 46, isn't it, of Guy Cosmo that's coming up behind them. That'll be the sixth position GS car coming to put a lap on this trio. Neil's biting time, 12 minutes to go, and that's six seconds at the head of the field. Through in the Porsche, 46 car. Guy Cosmo down towards the first corner, picking his braking spot. 
Getting the car turned in. It's greasy, slippery, and horrid on the inside. Fine, trying to find grip now. As on board the 26, the unmistakable sound of the tortured Mazda four-cylinder engine. Huge slide for Andrew Carbonell, but those Mazdas are very, very controllable, even at the limit. Big slide again, and Carbonell takes a position there. Back ahead of Spencer Pumpelli, who was battling with Stephen Simpson. And what Carbonell wants to do is put the 54 between himself and the Porsche behind him at the moment. 11 minutes to go in this rain-affected, rain and weather-affected eighth round of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. And it's Mark Miller across the line who leads from Billy Johnson in second. They are first and second in the championship. It's just under six seconds between the 33 dark grey Porsche and the 15 white and green. Shelby Mustang, Trent Hinman still trying to close that gap. The number 12 Porsche, the body motion car, white, blue and black. Seven seconds away from Billy Johnson. Time is not on the side of Trent Hinman at the moment. And unfortunately, for those of you watching on, we've got lightning in the area again. And that means that we'll have to stand down our camera people. We're inside 10 minutes to go now in this race. So probably just another you know, four laps or so after this one, perhaps. So Mark Miller with it all still to do in terms of CJ Wilson racing. They have yet to bring home the first place trophy. Intriguing battle in the mid-teens of the ST category with Spencer Pumpelli battling for every single point he can at the moment. The 17 team leading the championship. Nick Galante and, and Spencer Pumpelli with the Rensport 1 Porsche came in the 17 car. Unable to get past Stephen Simpson in the BMW, the 54 bright yellow car. Stephen doing a cracking job and not doing anything wrong at all in defending his position. And Mark Pombo in that mini car number 73, now less than two seconds behind the second place car in ST. And that is the uh, Eric Cross, Cross yeah. Yeah, in the uh, Merlot Racing car number 56. But between those two remains that number 83 uh, Porsche came and there's a, a couple of laps down, or a lap down. Trent Hinman gets within five seconds of Billy Johnson. Billy Johnson. Gets to four and a half seconds between himself and Mark Miller. A 209, a 209, and a 209, and a 207 for Trent Hinman and Billy Johnson. The last couple of laps, a 211 for Mark Miller. For a moment, the 26 of Andrew Carbonell gets ahead of the BMW, but can't make it stick because it hasn't got the power and the ponies down the long straights. Well, this is exciting. This is right on the very ragged edge for all of the cars. They'll be running out of grip on these Continental wet weather tyres. Extremely durable, but they have been asked to do something they weren't designed to do this weekend. They're driving now on pretty much a dry track. It's been barely wet for 20 minutes. And now it's pretty much dry. Little wiggle from Andrew Carbonell behind the wheel of the Mazda. And on that last lap, Trent Hinman turned a 2077. That compared to a race leader's 2110 and a second place car 209. So on that lap, Trent Hinman massively faster. And what's interesting about that, Jeremy, we're thinking it's getting drier here. That's still 10 seconds away from the best lap of the race. Sebastian Landy on lap five yeah. when he was having a scrap for the lead. So that will tell you how treacherous it still is out there 
on tyres that are not suited for the conditions. And say again, these tyres are being asked to do a job now for which, for which they were not designed. And now uh, Gre Gregory Liefuga, that lap to number 83 car, has got past the number 56 car that is running second in ST. And now right on the tail of Eric Foss is that mini of Matt Pombo. That is the battle for second position. The 56 bright orange Porsche, the 73 the dark red uh, black roof mini at the head of the field. It's still five seconds. Mark Miller and Billy Johnson can't quite see him, but he's going to see Trent Hinman any second now in his mirrors because Trent's got it down to 3.3 seconds. And this is, well, it's important for the championship. It's not earth shaking and Billy Johnson needs to be sensible here. I'm sure he will try and fight Trent off in the last few minutes if Trent gets to him, but there's no sense in ending up in the grass and losing more positions. Their championship rivals are leading the race at the moment. Right now, there's only a three-point difference between Mark Miller and Danny Burkett and Billy Johnson and Scott Maxwell. If Billy was to drop down to the end of the field, the GS field, that clearly would be a much bigger gap. Trent Hinman had a huge slide going into the oak tree. He, he made it around. He can see <laughs> Billy Johnson now, can't he? He's really turning up the wick in that number 12 Porsche. He did make yes, it around, he did but he lost a bit of ground, I think. Well, 2.5 seconds it was at the first split. Mark Miller has just gone through split two. Here comes the chasing pair. No, he's closed him down. 2.7 seconds, lost maybe a couple of tenths there, Jeremy, but nothing more than that, so no major damage. There's the Mini going through in front of us, and it was barely a couple of cars lengths behind Eric Foss. Half a second is what the stopwatch says. Ryan Eversley leading by nearly 10 seconds in ST, seventh overall in the 93 Honda, then the 56 Porsche, then the 73 Mini. Trent Hinman's gone through, he's closed in again. Billy Johnson having to be so patient now, putting the power down. The not inconsiderable power generated by the big V8. He'll be feeling for grip all the time through the seat of the car, through his right foot, through the lightest of touches on the steering wheel. And Trent Hinman will see that big Mustang moving around. He'll know that Billy Johnson is stroking the car home. Three and a half minutes to go. Two more laps. One more at the end of this one, I think. Johnson risking taking the curves through curves through the climbing s's and up towards turn 10 turns it in car still looking a bit twitchy hits these braking marker for the oak tree turn lets it breathe in the middle of the double apex right can't get the power down no. just wheel spin wheel spin <laughs> wheel spin all the time there and hinman's it within two and a half seconds jeremy it's really tricky out there right now and you, you you've got to use the curbs here but the curbs are, are generally pretty slippery because they're painted uh, and that makes it even more treacherous uh, as the, these cars are already losing a bit of grip it's really tricky out it's but so easy to make a mistake look at the lap days. times though jeremy everybody's pushing on mark yeah. miller at 208 flat 2076 for billy johnson 2066 for Trent Hidman. Time is going to run out on Trent. He's going to want a 10 more minutes, isn't he? Or maybe even as few as five. Yeah. Matt Pombo is right on the tail of Eric Voss as well. They'll be coming past us in a second. And there they are. Oh, and the leader's just gone by them. So that an added complication for Eric Voss trying to Eric Voss trying to hold on to second place in ST did just been lost by the leader did you I the don't think flag? he did it was, it was very very close as to whether he would have done I didn't see it Jeremy if I'm honest but let's not less, forget less than two seconds now between the second and third place cars 
as they go into uh, turn turn two three there with some slower cars ahead of them. And an extra three and a quarter miles might be crucial for Trent Hinban and the body motion Porsche team. Now, I'm looking down to the pit lane and Brian Till seems to be signalling one more lap, so maybe he's had the word from race control. Nothing on our screens here. Billy Johnson will be delighted if this is the last lap because he's got Ooh, traffic Mark ahead Muller. of him and it's the battle for the ST second and third position, Jeremy, that they are coming upon now. And, and it looks like Hinman's right with him. Hinman is right with him. The up tree turn at the moment. He'll swing out wide and they're coming through second and third in ST down Madison Avenue for what might be the last time. It all depends what ha is happening at the line ahead. That's second and third in ST and second and third in overall of GS. Isn't Correct, it? the two second and third <laughs> battles. A nice piece of symmetry there as they go into the roller coaster. And I think Pombo might have used the draft from the Mustang going through to his advantage as they come across the skyline. We'll just have to spot the colours of the cars. Oh, they're so close together. One more. One more lap, I'm being told. So Trent Hinman is right there. Voss had stayed in third position, couldn't make it. Billy Johnson slides up the front straight. Trent Hinman's going to be right with him. He's got a better run, but the Mustang still has more power. They come through the white flag now, and they've got three and a quarter miles more, as has Eric Voss behind them. The Mini and the Porsche battle it out. Mark Miller has gone through four and a half seconds ahead of this battle. It's going to go right down to the wire again. The Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge delivering superb excitement and entertainment. And Billy Johnson has lost second place, has round the outside of turn number three. The Porsche just gets ahead, but then has to drop in behind as they go through turn four. Really good racing room asked for and given there by those two. Mark Miller's ahead. This is the battle of wills now, not just of the cars. Hinman and Billy Johnson scrapping it out, trying to find grip where there is none. And behind them, it's exactly the same story between the 56 Porsche, the yellow and the orange and black car, and the Mini of Matt Pombo. That's second and third as well. Ryan Eversley well up the road by something like 10 and a half seconds. What a cracking finish, and there goes round the outside again into the oak tree it looked like Hinman had got it for a moment but he does the over and under gets right under the rear wing of the big ford now can he hold on can he use that gap in the air no the ford hooks up this time and, and doesn't spin the wheel so much oh trent Hinman will be plotting and scheming he's got three more corners He's not going to be able to do it as a drag race, Jeremy. So he's got to somehow try to do it into the roller coaster. It's going to be very, very hard to pull off for Trent Hinman, but he's given us the entertainment running into the last couple of laps here. There's a bit of traffic ahead of them, but it's not going to fall in his favour. As Trent Hinman is right in the wheel tracks now. They go across the line, there's an overlap, he's on the inside, it's going to be a drag race to the line, and Hinman is right there on the right-hand side, but the water, clear blue water between them now, as Danny Paquette's teammate Mark Miller takes the win, and just holding on to second by two-tenths of a second, Billy Johnson from Hinman, 33, 15 and 12, Eversley's gone through, Foss and Pombo stay in their positions let's go down to see Joe wilson racing for their first victory so danny burkett finally 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 it's happened you've got that first win keeping your language clean because i know you're probably really excited right now and how canadians can be the emotions you're feeling right now what are they pure elation uh, this is this is awesome i mean it's been such a long time coming and to, to finally do it it's it's almost surreal at this point. I mean, we're still fighting for the championship. We're still in it. We had to come out here and do this. And Mark went and delivered. We had a fantastic race. This is one of the best feelings in the world. Yeah, Mark's not going to be so upset about not getting those sunglasses. He gets a trophy. Congrats, Danny. Thank you so much. Exceptional stuff down at the C.J. Wilson 
racing pit. That is a team already thinking about the party. Jim Roller is down at Honda. That was a great drive from Ryan Eversley as well. Yeah, really. Jim just waiting for the 93 team. They've seen Eversley go across the line. It's confirmed now, Jim. Yes, John, it is confirmed. And uh, Chad, uh, congratulations. An awful wry smile. Yeah, well, you know, coming into this weekend, we usually don't do very well here, especially with the heat the way it is. It's been like this the last few years in a row. So coming here, we were really hoping that it would rain. Um, you know, the first rain that we had wasn't really what we wanted. You know, it came down really bad, and they had the red flag the race. You know, no, nobody really wanted that, especially with everybody on slicks. Uh, when we finally were able to make the driver change, we got on reins and, and everything was good, but then it started drying out, so we were a little worried, you know, on there. But then we got just a little bit of rain is what we needed and no more yellows, and, and it worked out perfectly. Now, for you guys, you've had a two seconds, a third this season. These are these are hobbyists. You know, you guys work for a living. You're at the shop uh, every day building, building these Hondas. How important is this? guys to be able to, to do this and bring home a victory and what kind of reception are you going to get when you get home to Marysville? Yeah, hopefully everybody will be excited. I mean, you know, the company really backs us a lot and, and they love that we do this and then allow us to do this. And, you know, I, I can't thank all the guys here enough because, you know, th they don't get paid anything to do this. They're here because they love it. You know, being able to bring home a trophy and, you know, of course, the win for them is it means everything. Um, it's also good for Honda. We had a lot of cu customers here who come see the cars, tell us how much they love their car, and that's that's why we do this. You guys get Monday off if you win? No, I wish we did, <laughs> actually. You know, we're trying to work on some of that to make this maybe a little bit more of a, you know, part of our job, and, and you know, so that way we can try and do it without having to take vacation all the time. But uh, anyway, as long as they let us do it, I'm happy. All right, congratulations to you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, good question, Jim. Do you get Monday off? Yeah, right. Uh, Danny Paquette and the rest of the C.J. Miller racing team, C.J. Miller, C.J. Wilson racing team, uh, are on their way to victory lane for the first time this season. Shea Adam is down there. We'll get a word with Mark Miller and with Ryan Eversley as well in a moment. Two very, very good restarts from those guys. Took their opportunity early once we got going with just over 55 0 minutes to go. Jeremy's just doing a little bit of arithmetic on the point standings at the moment. But let me confirm the top three in GS and in ST for you at the end of this rain affected event at VIR. And thanks for staying on and uh, toughing it out to the end for this uh, exciting climax. Trent Hinman in third place for Body Motion Racing with Cameron Castles taking car uh, in the first part of the race. He was just two tenths of a second behind Billy Johnson and Scott Maxwell in the number 15, the Multibatic Motorsports Ford Shelby GT350 RC and Mark Miller and Danny Paquette take it for the 33 CJ Wilson Racing One Capital Management Porsche Cayman GT4, meaning the championship, Jeremy, looks like this. Looks like this with a 20-point lead now for Scott Maxwell and Billy Johnson going into the final two races of the season. Uh, and uh, in the Manufacturers' Championship, tied. Oh! <laughs> uh, there's uh, four wins apiece now and four seconds each for Ford and Porsche. So absolutely, uh, absolutely together as they head into Circuit of the Americas for the next race. And in ST, Ryan Eversley wins for the 93 Porsche team, along with Chad Gilsing, Eric Voss uh, for the uh, Honda team, excuse me, the uh, HERT team. 56 Porsche, Eric Voss and Jeff Mosing in second, and uh, Matt Pombo for Mini. Great drive back yeah. uh, from Matt in that last part of the, the race. The, the Mini JCW team with Derek Jones starting the race, meaning the ST championship. Is uh, Nick Galante and... Spencer Pompelli still lead wow. but with a 14th place finish. Their lead over Stephen McAleer and Chad McCumbie, who finished in seventh place, is now down to only seven points with two races to go. And then 20 points farther back are Jeff Mosing and Eric Foss with that excellent run to the second place today, just holding off the mini. Mark Miller is with Jim Roller. 
Uh, he's getting big hugs from the crew, well-deserved. This is one happy bunch as uh, Shay uh, was able to uh, let us listen in on as they were uh, celebrating. Mark Miller was uh, just an absolutely fantastic drive. And Mark, I gotta tell you what, when you were uh, working your way through some of that traffic, I was sitting there going, oh God, don't let it be Watkins Glen again. And it wasn't this time. Congratulations. How does this first victory feel? It feels awesome. They want a picture, but I don't care. I'm gonna yeah, get over there. Get... Uh, no, it feels awesome. Woo! You know, these are uh, too many close calls. And, uh...